Hello guys, how are you all? Welcome back to my channel. So, today we are gonna see, what if Naruto drop his mask in front of Sasuke and Sakura earlier? Part 1, subscribe if you enjoy the video, and also check the description. So let's begin the story. Naruto was walking down the hallway of the academy heading towards his classroom deep in thought about what he just learned was sealed within him. When he acknowledged his surroundings, he came to the realization that he was already outside the door. He slowly opened the door and as soon as he got inside, everyone stopped what they were doing and glared at him. Hey what are you doing here loser asked one of the guys in the room, only the ones who graduated are allowed here. Naruto, who was still in his train of thought, just took a glance at the one who asked and answered in a whisper, that's why I'm here. Now mind your own business and leave me alone. Sakura, who was sitting near Naruto, heard what he answered. What's with him, he's not usually like that. Well not that I care. Naruto was walking up the stairs towards a desk when someone suddenly stuck their feet to make him fall, but what happened, no one expected. Naruto punched the guy in the face, and his whole expression darkened. What the hell is your problem? What have I ever done to any of you guys to be treated like I'm not even human? The ones who treat me worse than anyone else here are the team's fangirls. You think that doing all those things you will gain the nonsense's attention. And if you are here just to impress Duck over there, then I suggest you leave because you're here for the wrong reasons. Everyone was shocked by the blonde's words, even Sasuke, but eventually most of the fangirl shrugged it off as something the dope said, and that because he said it, it was stupid, but if people could read some of the ones that actually thought about it, they would be really surprised. I think I underestimated Naruto, maybe he's not as stupid as I thought. And if what he said enters the thick skulls of those damned fangirls of mine, I will finally be free thought Sasuke. What if what Naruto said was true? Am I here for the right reasons? Besides, I think it's time I moved on. I mean Sasuke-kun is handsome and everything but, has he really paid attention to me thought Sakura now that I think of it, none of my attempts to ask him out of worked and besides, even if he said yes, he's too cold for me. I doubt he's everything I dreamed of, it's about damn time you noticed said inner Sakura, you mean you knew and never told me? Why? I wanted you to come to accept the fact that the Sasuke you said you love is not the one out there. Besides, there is someone who is everything you ever dreamed of and more, but I'll let you find out who he is. Come on. Please. I will only tell you that you will be very surprised as to who it is, but when you give him a chance, you will not regret it and with that, inner Sakura left. Five minutes passed since Naruto gave his little speech, and Naruka walked through the door with some papers in his hands. As soon as he saw Naruto he smiled, but when he noticed the look on his face, his face fell a little. He must be thinking about yesterday Aruka thought. Good morning everyone. I want you to know that I'm very proud of each and every one of you. I knew that you had the potential to become Shinobi and Kinoichi of Kanoha. said Aruka, now I'm sure you're excited to know who is on your team. When he said that, he knew that he got everyone's attention. Please tell me that I'm with Sasuke-kun. I'm sorry Eno, but wait until I start and before I read, please don't get your hopes up as you may be with people you may not like, but know that you have to put your differences aside to work well with each other said Aruka. Okay so Team 7 has had a Kakashi as their sensei and the members are. Haruno Sakura, Yuzumaki Naruto and Ichiha Sasuke. When he said that, he expected to hear Sakura and Naruto cheer, but it didn't happen. What did happen though was that all the fangirls glared at both of Sasuke's teammates, and Ino gave a loud groan after losing to her longtime rival. Teammate. Sensei Yuuhi Kurenai, members. Inuzuka Kiba, Hayuga Hinata and Aburam Shino as soon as he finished talking, a tall raven-haired woman with red eyes and covered in bandages came in. Teammate come with me she said before leaving with her students in tow. Because Team 9 is still active, we'll move on to Team 10, which consists of Suratobi Asuma as their sensei and Yamanaka Ino, Nara Shikamaru and Akamichi Chaoji. As soon as he said that he swore he heard someone mutter troublesome and someone's head hitting a desk. Team 10, we're leaving said a man with a beard. He was wearing the standard uniform along with a sash and bracelets on both his hands. After Team 10 left, Haruka finished calling all the teams, but Team 7 had yet to leave. He wanted to have a little talk with Naruto about his out-of-character behavior before he left, so he called him over. Hey Naruto, do you have a second he asked. Sure, Hiroka sensei Naruto replied. Are you okay? I noticed you have been like that since I came here earlier today. And you didn't even cheer when you heard you were on the same team as Sakura, and I know you really like her. Don't get me wrong, I'm really happy about that, but now that I know why I've been hated for so long, I've thought about who I should tell. I mean both Sasuke and Sakura deserve to know even if we don't really get along, but I think it's important for our teamwork. I also wanted to tell Kiba, Shika and Choji as they're my only real friends. Also there's one more thing. You, Hokage Jiji, the guys and the Achirikas are the only ones who know that the personality I show is just a mask, and that I'm actually smart. I've been thinking that since I'm a shinobi now, it would be best for me to act like such and drop the act, but not to the point where I don't talk with anyone. Aruka sighed before answering, do as you think is better. 
I think that your friends would accept you even after you tell them about Kai Ubi. And about the mask, you're right, but it could come in handy during battles to make you opponent underestimate you, thank you Aruka sensei I'm glad I talked to you. I feel more at peace with myself. Said Naruto. Glad to know I was of help, said Aruka before giving Naruto a small hug. You up for Raymond tonight? My treat. Sure. Thank you again. Don't mention it, and with that, he left the room, leaving Team 7 alone. While Naruto and Aruka were having their conversation, Sasuke was surprised that Sakura had not even once tried to go near him and set himself to find out the reason. Maybe she considered what the dope said. If that happened, then maybe this would be the perfect team for me as Naruto seems more reserved and Sakura no longer looks like she is interested in me. Hey Sakura said Sasuke. Oh, yes, Sasuke she replied. What? No cun after my name. This has to be the best thing Naruto has ever done thought Sasuke, not that I care, but weren't you like one of my biggest fangirls asked Sasuke. Oh, that. Well after Naruto gave his little speech earlier, I realized that I was nowhere near as infatuated with you as I so freely said. Truth is, I think I was never actually in love with you, and now that I came to accept it, I feel like a weight has been lifted off my shoulders Sakura answered, you're not mad that you lost a fangirl, are you? Mad? No. Relieved. Yes. I'm actually happy that you no longer like me like that as we can now work without having to go through the same things, and now that the dope looks a little more mature, I'm sure we will be a good team. Just as Sakura was about to answer, the door opened to reveal a funny looking guy. He had a weird hairstyle that seemed to defy gravity, and was dressed as most with the exception of a mask that covered half his face, and his headband covered his left eye. Meet me at the rooftop and with that he disappeared in a puff of smoke. Page Bunshin stated Naruto simply before walking outside with a face that none of the two had ever seen him use. They shrugged it off and followed him outside. When they reached the rooftop, they found their sensei already there. Alright, how about you tell me your names, likes, dislikes, hobbies and dreams he said with a bored voice, as if he wanted to be somewhere else at that moment. Hey, aren't you supposed to introduce yourself first sensei asked Sakura. Alright Sai my name is Hada Kakashi. What I like or dislike is not important, hobbies I don't have one in dreams, A he said pointing at Naruto, you first blondie. All he said was his name was the shared thought of the three teammates. A sensei, I would rather talk after them as what I have to say is rather important Naruto said with a downcast expression. So he is going to tell them about the Kaiubi. Good luck Naruto, even if they don't accept you, I will. I will not fail you sensei alright, I have a clue as to what you may say, so I will let it slide this time. Well moving on, how about you he said nodding towards Sasuke. I'm Ichiha Sasuke and I don't like many things and I dislike most. My hobby is to train to accomplish not a dream, but a goal that is to kill a certain man and revive my clan. He said with his arms crossed. I knew he would say something like that. I will try to take him out of that path that will lead him nowhere. Pinky he said, making Sakura a little mad. First, my name is not Pinky, it's Haruno Sakura. I like spending time with my friends, I dislike people who used to bully me because of my forehead, my hobby is reading and learning, and I don't have a dream yet, but I hope to get one soon. She finished with a huff. Interesting, I thought she would be the typical fangirl, but she proved me wrong. Well Naruto, good luck. Okay last but not least, you. Naruto swore he could see comprehension in his sensei's eyes, but shrugged it off. Well sigh I'm Yuzumaki Naruto. I like Raymon, I dislike the 3 minute wait for Raymon to be ready, people who think they're better than others, and those who judge without knowing me. My way is to prank people, and my dream is to become the greatest Hokage ever and to be acknowledged by everyone. After he said that, he took a deep breath, Sasuke, Sakura-chan, there's something really important you need to know if we're going to be a team and trust me that it's not easy to tell you this, and I understand if you don't want to be near me anymore. What could be so bad was what was running through their heads when Naruto said that. Well, I think I should start by saying that the Naruto you knew was a mask. A mask used to deceive everyone to make them underestimate me, and I guess it worked. He paused and looked at the surprised face of their teammates. During our time together you will know the real me and know that I'm nowhere near stupid as I showed. After that, he paused before adding, I'm sure you have seen the looks people give me around here. When he saw them nod, he continued, what I'm going to tell you, I ask that you don't tell anyone as it is a S-class secret that has death as punishment. I'm going to ask what you know about the Kaiubi attack 12 years ago. Sasuke said, the Yandame Hokage risked his life killing the beast Sakura nodded. They were astonished when Naruto said bullshit, what do you mean? That's what Aruka sensei told us during class said Sakura, it is impossible to kill a being completely made of chakra, so the only thing the Yandame could do was seal it, but he couldn't seal it in an object. It had to be done in a human being, but an adult already had their chakra coils developed, so the only option left was a baby. The baby the Yandane used to seal the Kaiubi no Kitsune to save the village was me. Not only that, but I also never knew my parents and for all my life I thought they had abandoned me. 
That is what I wanted to tell you and thank you Kakashi Sensei for understanding Kakashi nodded softly, and sadness was very visible in his lone eye, as the man who died sealing the beast was none other than his own sensei. To say that Sakura and Sasuke were shocked would be the understatement of the year. Everything started to come into place. The glares, the mobs, the name calling. It was clear why their teammate was treated that way now. Sasuke was the first to recover from the major shock, he has even had a worse life than me. At least I was loved at some point, but he never had a family. Besides, having to carry a burden like that alone must be tough. You won't be alone. That is the least I can do. Besides, I was starting to doubt if my ambition was what I really wanted, or if it was what Itachi had planned all along. Sakura's thoughts were not that different wow I never even knew that he had no family. I guess this is why mom wanted me to be friends with him, but I was too stupid follow the crowd and care about my public image. So what will you do about it? It is crystal clear that he likes us, so why don't you give him a chance? He's cute and really nice to us. Not to mention what mom said when we were younger. I guess you're right but he has to ask me out, and it will be his friends. I want to get to know him first. I don't want it to be like the Sasu thing all over again, that's my girl. Now tell him something before he gets worried, Naruto, I want you to know that I will help you with whatever you need, and that I'm actually happy that it's you who holds the Kaiubi as I know you would never use its power for the wrong reason Sakura said smiling. You know what dope, you're not as bad as you seem, and now that I think about it, you have had a worse life than I had, and here you are, looking towards the future rather than at the past. Thank you for helping me realize that I shouldn't dwell in the past. If you ever need anything let me know. said Sasuke with what seemed to be a smile. At this point, Naruto had tears in his eyes thank you guys, you don't know how much this means to me, I have known them for less than an hour, and they already made me proud. They will go really far. Kakashi thought well now that that is settled, tomorrow meet me at training grounds number 7 for your real genin test. Oh and don't eat breakfast as you will throw up. He said with an eye smile, Jana and he disappeared in a swirl of leaves. See you guys tomorrow said Sasuke as he left. So, uh Sakura chan um would you like to have lunch with me said Naruto red from the embarrassment of asking the girl of his dreams out. Sure she said smiling but then added, but only as friends as I'm still sorting out my feelings, and I would like to get to know you better before anything happens between us. Hey I waited for years, I can wait a little more he said with his foxy grin. Let's go then she said, and with that they left towards the Ichiraku Raymond stand, as it was the only one that let Naruto in. When they got to Ichirakus, it was a little past midday. As soon as Tucci saw Naruto, he smiled only for it to turn to a grin that threatened to split his face when he noticed Sakura and decided to tease them a bit. Hey Naruto, nice to see you got yourself a girlfriend exclaimed Tucci. Both teens blushed as Naruto answered, we're just friends Aji-san. Whatever you say boy he said well what will you have? I'll have an extra large Maizo Raymond shouted Naruto making Sakura giggle at his childish antics. What about you Sakura-chan? A small vegetable Raymond please she said, so, Naruto there's something I've been wanting to ask you for a long time, sure, what is it? Why do you always use that bright orange jumpsuit? Haven't you thought that it may attract unwanted attention while on missions? Well, truth be told, this is the only thing I have to wear. Where I bought it only sold it to me to get rid of it. And I'm not allowed on any store alone, so I guess you get what I'm trying to say said Naruto sadly. She gasped if that's the case, then let's eat so I take you shopping. I'll get you new clothes and get to know you at the same time she finished smiling. Thank you, thank you so much Sakura-chan. This means a lot to me he said with a real smile. Wow, I think this is the first time I've seen him actually happy and not pretending like always. They hurried eating, and Sakura literally dragged Naruto to the shopping district of the village, thinking about what colors would suit Naruto, ignoring his cries of pain. She entered a shinobi armor store and awed at the sight of so many clothes, but she was snapped back to reality when she heard the clerk ushering her friend out. Hey, what do you think you're doing she exclaimed angry. The clerk sneered, the demon Brad is not allowed to shop in my store, well he will not buy anything and he is with me. If you bother us again, I will report you with it, she said, allowing a little of her inner out to scare the man. He left without even sparing Naruto or her glance, and went back to what he was doing. While this was going on, Naruto was surprised that she stood up for him, but as soon as the man left, Sakura went back to the task at hand. She went through racks of clothes until something caught her eye. Naruto, try this on she said, giving him a full outfit. When he came out of the fitting rooms, Sakura blushed, Shanro. Look at our man. He's not our man. Yet, ha. Ah. You said yet so that must mean you have considered being with him, well, I know that this is fast. I mean this morning I woke up liking Sasuke, but it's all about Naruto now. I think I know who the guy you mentioned earlier was. It was Naruto wasn't it? Yes and about the other part, do you regret starting to fall for him? No. You were right. Now that I'm spending time with him, I realize that everything I thought Sasuke was, Naruto actually is. I think you should say something. 
He's getting worried. Oh. I think you have a little of blood running down your nose. Sakura-chan. Are you okay? You weren't answering so I got worried said Naruto. She furiously wiped the blood off her nose before replying sorry Naruto-kun, but that outfit really suits you. He was wearing a black shirt with no sleeves, red and black fingerless gloves and black pants, with an orange line going down his left leg. Naruto blushed when she added the kun next to his name and looked like he was going to pull a Hinata when she complimented his looks. Thank you Sakura-chan he said barely above a whisper. Let's go pay this and leave this place. He paid the clerk, who was scowling, and left. I had a great time, Naruto-kun Sakura said with a smile and blushing a little. Same here, Sakura-chan. This has been the best day in my life he said, smiling widely. I bet I can make it better and with that she did the most unexpected thing. She kissed Naruto on the cheek and hugged him before running home. He didn't know how long he stood there, but he couldn't care less. The girl he had a crush on since they were seven, had kissed and hugged him. He didn't think that his day could get any better than that. Suddenly an Anbu man appeared before him, Hokage-sama asked for you immediately. I wonder what Hokage Jiji wants okay, let's go and with that the Anbu placed a hand on Naruto's shoulder and both disappeared in a swirl of leaves. When Sayaki saw her daughter with a smile on her face, she asked Sakura, dear, why are you so happy? Does it have anything to do with your team? Who are you with maybe she got teamed up with the Ichiha boy she likes. Oh well, what can I do? Yes Ka-san, it has to do with my team. I am with Sasuke and Naruto-kun she said smiling, wait, Naruto-kun? And no kun after Sasuke's name? Who are you and what did you do with my daughter said Sayaki with a chuckle, well, I realized that Naruto has everything I wanted in Sasuke and besides he's cute she was blushing by this point, I guess there's more to it, yes. Naruto-kun told us about what he has within him and after the team meeting, I went to have lunch and shopping for new clothes for him, Sayaki smiled, so you finally gave him a chance. I'm proud of you for not thinking Naruto is the Kaiubi like the rest of this foolish village. So did anything else happen on that little date of yours for you to be as happy as you are? Sakura's whole face went red with embarrassment, well I uh, kissed him on the cheek and hugged him she said looking away. So, what a rather who made you stop liking the Acha? Because this morning you were hoping to be with him. Well, it was Naruto-kun who made me realize that Sasuke wasn't what I thought he was and also opened my eyes to see that if I became a ninja just to impress Sasuke, then it was not for a real reason. So now why do you want to be a ninja? To protect my village and its people just like Naruto-kun she said with determination in her eyes. Sayaki could only smile and be proud of her daughter not only for finding a new goal, but also for finding out the truth about her teammate and accepting him, my little girl is growing up. Saratobi Hiruzen was waiting for the hyperactive blonde to show up as he had some things to discuss with him. He had witnessed the moment Naruto told his teammates about his tenant and was proud of the new generation. He also spied on Naruto's and Sakura's date and was happy for the boy he considered a grandson. Suddenly, a knock on the door interrupted his thoughts. Come in he said with a stern voice that grew into a smile when he saw it was Naruto. What's up Aji san asked Naruto with his trademark grin and his hands behind his head. Hello, Naruto-kun. I see you got new clothes. May I ask who you went shopping with? It suits you by the way said the old man smiling knowingly. Naruto blushed before answering Sakura-chan chose them for me. This has been the best day in my life. Oh? Care to enlighten me said Hiruzen mockingly. Well, when we went to meet our sensei, I told my team about the fox, and I expected them to shun me as everyone else, but they accepted me, and Sakura-chan finally agreed to go out with me he was smiling brightly when he finished, but Saratobi saw it was a real one, not those fake smiles he gives most of the time. I'm happy for you my boy. Now I know your sensei is Kakashi. Would you like for me to tell you some stuff about him and his little test he has planned for you tomorrow? Really Aji-san? You would do that for me he asked practically jumping with joy, sure. Well the first thing you need to know is do not underestimate him. He may seem like he's not that strong, but he's an elite and one of the best we have. He is widely known as the copy ninja, and he is on the bingo books of a lot of villages. They said, he is also big, and I do mean it when I say it, pervert. Not the class who will peek at girls, like my former student Jiraiya, but Kakashi is always reading that disgusting smut book of his which non-surprisingly was written by Jiraiya. One more thing, his sensei was none other than the Yandame Hokage, great. Just what I needed, a super pervert as a sensei. I guess that since he is that strong, it doesn't matter, but if he tries anything funny with Sakura-chan, I will personally kill him thought Naruto angrily. Sandane just chuckled at the boy's expression while getting up to ruffle his hair. Now boy, don't go around trying to kill your sensei. Well, to the second part of what I was going to tell you, you can tell your teammates, but do not let Kakashi know I told you Dottie said adding a wink on the last part, you got it. Now, now, your test is about teamwork. 
I'm pretty sure it is the same test he has used on every team he got before you, but because none of them figured out the true intention of it, all of them failed. This test was first used by Kakashi Sensei on his team. What he wants you to do is to drive you apart by telling you that one of you will fail. You must stick together at all times to succeed. Is it okay if I tell Sakura-chan and Sasuke asked, you can tell them. Oh. One more thing before you leave. Eat a good breakfast. He told you not to do so because he wants you to be at a disadvantage. Take something for your friends too just in case. You will have time because Kakashi is always two and a half hours late to everything, thank you Aji-san. I will get going now. I have to be ready for tomorrow. And with that, Naruto left. The next day, Sakura woke up at 5 am to get ready for her test. She went to the bathroom and started undressing. When she entered the shower, she let out a sigh at the feel of the warm water. That was the moment where her inner decided to make herself known. So, how are you going to take it with Naruto-kun? I know that this is a little fast, but try going out with him again or ask him over for dinner. I'm sure Ka-san wouldn't mind. I know that I should take it slow, but when I hugged him yesterday it felt so right, and I had to contain myself from giving him a full kiss on the cheek then. I don't know if I will be able to stop next time. I think I really am starting to fall for that knucklehead she thought while washing her hair. Then talk with him about it. Maybe doing so would help you understand it better, you're right. Today after the test, I will have a talk with him. I would like to talk with him before we start, but I'm sure there won't be time as sensei would get mad. She turned off the shower and dried herself before brushing her teeth. In her room, she picked a red sleeveless dress and tight dark blue pants. As soon as she was ready, she went downstairs to leave as an hour had already passed. Dear, aren't you going to have any breakfast asked her mother from the kitchen. Sensei said if I eat anything, I will throw up so I'm leaving now. Bye mom, I love you and with that she left. When she arrived at training grounds number 7, she saw that she wasn't the first one there as Naruto was lying on the ground watching the clouds. Hey there Sakura-chan he said enthusiastically. Hi Naruto-kun she said with a smile that made Naruto's heart flutter. Here, eat this. Sensei told us not to eat because he wanted us to be at a disadvantage. And before you ask me how I know, the old man told me. Naruto said casually, also there's something else about the test I need to tell you when time arrives. Sakura giggled at his nickname for Sasuke, and accepted the bento he was offering her, thank you, Naruto-kun. One more thing. Aji-sen also told me that Kaka-sensei tends to be late to everything by two and a half hours, so we got some time to kill he said, laying back down, yes. Now I can talk with him about us. Uh, Naruto. Yes Sakura-chan. I wanted to talk about as she said, I wanted to tell you that when I hugged you yesterday, I felt safe and loved, and I liked that feeling. I wanted to ask you if you wanted us to become a couple she was unsure about how he would react to that, but hoped he would accept as it was hard for her to tell him that. Naruto was beyond speechless. Not only had the girl of his dream, his beloved Sakura-chan, told him that she felt safe and liked being embraced by him, but she had also asked him if he wanted her as his girlfriend. Yes. I would love that Sakura-chan he said, barely containing his happiness, but he went over to where she was and hugged her, making Sakura smile as she returned the embrace. H.N. So you two are together or something said a voice making them blush and separate from each other's warmth. Yes Asuk, we are. I hope that's not a problem said Sakura recovering from her previous embarrassment. As long as it doesn't interfere with anything, I don't care he replied in his typical cold voice, why is there a bento here? Kakashi told us not to eat anything. I had a talk with Aji Sen yesterday, and he told me not to listen to Sensei about the eating thing. He also suggested I bring something for you, so here. Naruto said, giving Sasuke his bento, there's something important I need to tell you both about this test. What is Naruto kun Sakura asked her new boyfriend. Naruto proceeded to tell them about how Kakashi would try to drive them apart to test their teamwork, and during the remaining two hours, they planned different scenarios to beat their sensei. So everyone knows what to do ask Naruto. I don't set a voice behind them making every member of Team 7 jump in surprise. Kakashi sensei. Don't sneak on us like that exclaimed Sakura while trying to calm down. The shinobi must be ready for anything. But that's for another day. Kakashi shrugged. Today you are here for your real test. I will be the one to deem you worthy of being a ninja of Kanahagakure. If you fail, then all of you will go back to the academy. Say what Naruto shouted acting as if he didn't know about it. If you fail my test, you will have to either quit and live as a civilian or try your luck next year. But that's beside the point. Okay so about the test. You have to get these bells from me. The one who doesn't get one fails. You have until noon. Come with the intent to kill Dot he said with a serious expression begin and with that he disappeared in a puff of smoke. The tree genin put one of their plans into motion. Sasuke and Sakura went to hide behind some bushes, while Naruto went to the middle of the clearing. Kakashi sensei Come here and fight me. One on one shouted Naruto, is this kid stupid or what? Does he seriously believe he can fight me alone thought Kakashi you called. 
You sure you want to do this alone he asked while taking his book from his pouch. F fell right into our plan shut up and fight Naruto said charging right into Kakashi, only for him to turn into a log and appear right behind Naruto with his hands on the tiger seal. Never charge at your opponent without a plan, Naruto come. Run yelled Sakura from her hiding spot worried for her boyfriend, no one expected what happened next. Kakashi thrust his hand into Naruto only for him to disappear in a puff of smoke, Cage Bunshin. This kid is good thought Kakashi. Kakashi had to react quickly, taking out a kunai, as suddenly a huge volley of kunai and shuriken came flying towards him. What he couldn't dodge, he blocked, but it still required some effort. The surprise attack managed to move him near the river that flowed through the grounds, and Sasuke came out making fast hand seals. Pain. Kakaku no jutsu yelled Sasuke. Kakashi tried to move out of the way, but it was too late when he realized that he was being held by Naruto's clones. When the blast cleared, Kakashi was nowhere in sight. He got away stated Sakura a little disappointed that the first of their plans failed. We'll get him with this one for sure said Naruto, while Sasuke only smirked a little. He was starting to warm up to them but he didn't notice. Looks like they figured this out, but let's see if they really have thought Kakashi while thinking what to do for a surprise attack on them. Hey sensei, no more playing around. We already figured this out shouted Sakura. So much for a surprise attack thought Kakashi with a sweat drop, if you figured this out, then tell me to see if you are right he said putting his hands in his pockets. You want to test our teamwork said Sasuke. Hmm. Yes that is what I want. So far, Naruto and Sasuke pass, but since Sakura hasn't done anything yet, I don't know about her. You still have some time. Since you already know what to do, let's just fight dot said Kakashi getting in stance. The three genin smirked. Everything was going as planned. Suddenly, Naruto and Sasuke rushed to him with the intention of distracting him, while Sakura started doing some hand seals she learned recently. Kakashi knew what they wanted to do but held back just to test their strength. The he found himself in was at least level, so that impressed him, I'll have to help her with increasing her chakra reserves. Being able to do this kind of stuff so early is quite impressive. He waited for some seconds before releasing the only to see two fists smash into his face. Bacha sensei said Naruto grinning while showing him two bells. Tech again said Kakashi with an eye smile. How when he did as told, he saw he was holding two worms. After releasing them, he looked up to see their sensei gone. Looking for someone said a voice behind them. They quickly turned around and started throwing punches and kicks to the silver-haired dot. He didn't get hit once, and this greatly annoyed the teens. Kakashi could see the determination in their eyes, and he suddenly stopped. Okay guys, that's enough dot said Kakashi. What do you mean that's enough shouted Naruto annoyed. I mean that you. You pass he said with his typical eye smile. You're the first team to see underneath the underneath and to work together instead of fighting against each other. They were practically jumping out of joy shouting yes and those kinds of things. We're officially a team now. Dadabeo said Naruto. Yes said Sakura, hugging her boyfriend. Suddenly Naruto started to scream in pain. Ah. My head. It hurts. Naruto-kun said Sakura, helping him stand up. Red chakra spiked from random areas of Naruto's body, and as fast as it appeared, it went away and Naruto passed out. Sakura, Sasuke get over here now. I'll solve this said Kakashi with a serious voice. Was was that the Kyubi's chakra asked Sasuke afraid, not for himself, but surprisingly for Naruto's well-being. Yes Sasuke. It was dot said Kakashi worried for his student. By this point, Sakura had tears falling freely from her eyes. Is he going to be okay, sensei she asked barely above a whisper. I'm not sure. The seal is perfectly fine, so I don't know what triggered the chakra. I'm taking him to the hospital just in case. Both of you go home stated Kakashi worried for the son of his sensei. I'm going with you. There's no way I'm leaving my Naruto-kun when he needs me the most said Sakura. Kakashi only sighed okay then. Sasuke, wanna come too. Shouldn't Hokage-sama be informed? Shoot. I forgot about that. Okay Sasuke, since you brought that up, go to his office and tell him to go to the hospital. Say it's of the utmost importance. said Kakashi with a stern voice. Hi, sensei and with that he took off. Sakura, try to keep up said Kakashi rushing towards the hospital. Hang in there Naruto-kun. Naruto's mind. Naruto felt like he was falling into an abyss because of the long time he was suspended in a pitch black place. Out of nowhere, the scenery changed to a sower with water that reached a little above his ankles. Where am I he asked to no one while walking around. You are in your mind, Kit said a deep voice coming from his left. Who are you asked Naruto, alarmed while going to the place where the voice came from. Keep going and you will find out. When Naruto reached a dead end, he saw a gigantic cave with what seemed to be a cage. There was pure darkness in the cage, and that creeped him out a bit. Suddenly, two big blood red eyes appeared along with gigantic sharp fangs. Welcome, Kit. I am Kyubi no Kitsune. Calm down for I do not wish to hurt you. I want to make you a mere offer. Why should I believe you? 
You almost destroyed my home and cursed my life shouted Naruto. I owe you an explanation. Don't I said Kaiubi with a sigh. First let me change into my human form so that you can be a little more comfortable while talking to me the enormous beast started shrinking into what seemed like an adult woman. She had blood red hair with red eyes adorning her beautiful thin pale face. She had curves that most of the women would kill for. She was dressed in a white kimono with a red sash. When she walked towards Naruto, he could clearly see the nine tails flowing freely. Is this better she tenderly asked. A lot said Naruto letting out a breath he didn't know he had. Now, going back to the offer I told you about, it's more like repaying you for all the trouble I have caused you. Before I tell you about that, let me explain why I attacked that night 12 years ago said Kaiubi, taking a deep breath, I'm sure you know who Ichiha Madara is when. She saw Naruto nod, she continued, that night, I was resting peacefully until he appeared out of nowhere and started attacking me. I would not let a mere human attack me without consequences, but the second I looked at his eyes, I became mesmerized. That was when he took control of me. I tried to fight it, but I lost, and when I realized what was happening, it was too late. I was already within high no kuni and on my way to your village. I could not stop and then your hokage fought me. You know what happened from that point finished Kaiubi actually looking sorry and ashamed of her actions. Wow was all Naruto could say. I was always told in the academy that you just came out of nowhere and started attacking. So, what was what you wanted to tell me? First, I am going to tell you about your parents, really? You know about the mask Naruto excited about the thought of knowing about his parents. Yes I do and I will tell you as long as you stay quiet until I'm finished she paused and Naruto nodded vigorously and she let out a chuckle first, your mother. Her name was Yuzumaki Kashina from the Whirlpool village. She came to Konoha because she was the sole survivor of her home when I would destroyed it. She was said to be one of the strongest Kanoichi to ever come from Konoha. She took a breath before continuing now, your father. His name was Namikaze Minato, also known as the Yandame Hokage of Konoha no Kairoi Senko. I'm sure you know who he is as I've seen through your eyes to know he was your hero. This was a lot to take in for Naruto. First, he found out who his parents were. And now, he was being told that his father was the one he looked up to. He was beyond speechless. Thank you so much Kaiubi he said, tearing up a little bit and smiling. Kaiubi put on a mischievous grin, would you like to meet them? Naruto's eyes grew wider than dinner plates, how in the world is that possible? Aren't they dead? Why yes, they are. But there was a miscalculation in the seal they used and there's something you don't know. Your mother didn't die in childbirth. She passed away helping your father sealing me. The little problem in the process was that while they sealed me, they also sealed their souls within you. Kishina. Minato. I know you're here. Come here with your son. Said Kaiubi. Naruto couldn't believe his eyes. His own parents were right in front of him. He didn't know what to do as he was so nervous he started sweating. Mom? Daddy asked, tearing up. Hello my boy said Kashina in a loving voice. Sup little guy said Minato with a grin identical to Naruto's. Naruto couldn't take it anymore and ran to hug his parents for the first time in his life. He didn't want this moment to end for nothing. So how's life treating my son asked Minato shortly after they let go of each other. Naruto sighed before telling them about his childhood. He didn't want to, but they were his parents and had the right to know. Kashina started crying and hugged her son God, we thought they would treat you well, but I guess we were wrong. Naruto suddenly smiled and told them about the last two days. He told them about Sakura and how they got together and about his team. So you got little Kakashi as your sensei. Haha <laughs> nice to see he's still alive said Minato also, I'm surprised that the Ichi has let your teammate be on the same team as you knowing your Kaiubi's host. Naruto told them about the massacre and that Sasuke was the sole survivor and that Itachi was the one who killed everyone. Oh my god. Don't tell me Makoto was also killed said Kashina worried about her best friend and suddenly remembering about her friend's son and quickly put two and two together wait, you said your teammate's name was Sasuke right he nodded, he's Makoto's child, so that must mean she died too dot she said sadly, you mean that you and Sasuke's mom were friends asked Naruto surprised, like sisters added Minato, anyway, let's talk about something else dot said Kashina while trying to get over the fact that her best friend had died as well. You said you have a girlfriend asked Minato with a grin and winking. Naruto blushed yeah, her name is Haruno Sakura. We only got together today. We went on a date yesterday. My little boy is growing up said Minato wiping an imaginary tear. Naruto and Kishina laughed and soon Minato joined in. I would have loved to meet my daughter-in-law said Kishina sadly. Mom? We've only been together for less than a day. It's too soon to think about that said Naruto embarrassed. I'm sorry to interrupt, but there's something I need to ask you, Minato and Kishina said Kaiubi for the first time in a while. What is it said Minato a little confused. Kaiubi's face suddenly turned into a grin that threatened to split her face and innocently asked, what would you say if I told you that I know a way to bring both of you back to life? The three of them were speechless. Here was the Kaiubi offering a way to bring Naruto's parents back to the world of the living. 
You can really do that asked Naruto, excitement clear in his face. Yes, I can, but I will need your help said Kaiubi smiling, you will be a very important part of the process. In fact, without you it is impossible. You're not going to harm him are you asked Minato worried, calm down. I don't plan to hurt him said Kaiubi, I will explain the process and why Naruto is essential for this to work. Naruto will have to create two cage bunshin and have them both transform into both of you to give your future bodies your appearance, as the original ones are buried and rotten. Once the clones are transformed, you and the clones will have to meditate. From there on, you have to stay in that position until the process is finished. Since you are linked with your clones, Minato and Kashina will have to move each into the mind of one of the host bodies. I will then send my chakra to seal the souls and give you both full control of the body, as well as making them permanent full working human bodies. Kaiubi took a breath when I'm done, the clones will no longer be clones, so they won't dispel when hit. You will be as you were before you died. You will be able to fight and be a normal person. You can continue your lives from where you left off. You will have the chance to be real parents. They had tears in their eyes when told they could be parents and normal people. They had wanted to be with Naruto so much, and now that they had met him, they wanted to be with him forever. So, if our bodies are made of cage bunshin and chakra, will we age or anything asked Kashina. Yes, you will age and your bodies will function as a normal body. With my chakra, I will create organs and blood. You will be able to get killed or to die of old age. Answered Kaiubi. Let's do this then said Naruto wanting to be with his parents in real life and also wanting to introduce them to a certain pink-haired Kinoichi. I believe you have to tell your Hokage about this first, though. I'm sure he will want to know as well as your team said Kaiubi. Oh, by the way you passed out, your girlfriend got worried, your sensei took you to the hospital, and you are in bed in a room with your team and the Hokage there surrounding you said Kaiubi smirking, what? Why didn't you tell me that sooner? Damn, Sakura-chan must be worried said Naruto, pacing around, how do I wake up then? Wait. I will send you back said Kaiubi. Takra came out of Kaiubi and onto Naruto and with a flash, he disappeared from his mind. Sakura was holding Naruto's hand worried about him. It had already been four hours since he passed out and she had been next to him the entire time, not even leaving for the bathroom or for lunch. I sure hope Naruto is okay said Sirotobi. he is strong. He will wake up soon said Kakashi feeling confident about his student, he started to stir and slowly opened his eyes, blinking a little. He looked around the room and said, hey guys I'm awake now. Naruto-kun said Sakura as she lunged into his arms to hug him with all her might, what happened? You made me really worry she was crying by this point, sh, it's okay Sakura-chan. I'm fine everyone smiled at the way he comforted her, even Sasuke. Don't do that again, Baka she said wiping her tears and going back to her seat. How long was I out asked Naruto, about 4 hours. You had all of us worried. Mind telling us what happened asked Kakashi. Iwubi wanted to talk to me answered Naruto feeling more comfortable talking about it with the people in the room, as apart from them, only Aruka and the Ichiraku family accepted him. As soon as he said that, everyone turned serious, what did that monster tell you asked Suratobi frowning. Just to let you know, Kaiubi is no monster. She is really nice said Naruto shocking everyone, she told me about the real reason she attacked, this is hard to believe said Kakashi, well, it is true he said Aji-san, can you put a sound barrier? I don't want anyone overhearing us and with that, Kakashi made a few hand seals. Done said Kakashi and then Naruto proceeded to tell them everything Kaiubi told him. When he was done, everyone was shocked, this is a lot to take in. I will believe what you told us only because you wouldn't lie about this kind of stuff said Sirotobi while sitting down, that's not everything. She also told me about my parents. Aji-san, why didn't you tell me about it sooner said Naruto with a saddened face. Your father requested that because of his enemies in Iowa, you wouldn't be told about them until you were fully capable of handling yourself against a ninja of at least rank he answered. Wait, who were your parents Naruto-kun asked Sakura wanting to know about the blonde's family. My mom was Yuzumaki Kashina. She came here from Whirlpool Village. My dad was Namika's Minato, the Yandame Hokage he said shocking his teammates. Wow, Naruto-kun, now that you mention that, you actually look a lot like the Yandame from those books at the academy said Sakura. Yeah, I don't know how we missed that said Sasuke. Anyway, Kaiubi said there is a way to bring them back to life as there was a mistake during the sealing, and both of their souls were sealed in my, along with Kaiubi he said, further shocking everyone oh, and by the way, I also talked to them. A way to bring them back. Are you sure it's not an attempt to escape said Kakashi getting a little nervous. Don't worry, Kakashi. If Kaiubi tries to get out, both will die. And if Minato is indeed sealed in there, I'm sure he would have told her said here isn't so, Naruto, care to tell us how Kaiubi plans to revive Minato and Kashina. Sure said Naruto and explained everything, being careful not to let anything out. The elder sat in a thinking position contemplating about the information that was just revealed to them. Okay, Naruto. When do you want to do this he said seriously. Let's do it now said Naruto excitedly. Are you sure? 
I mean you just woke up after 4 hours said Kakashi. I'm fine. I already miss my parents said Naruto grinning. Well then, I will call two of my most trusted Anbu to prepare a room here as soon as possible said Hirzen. He snapped his fingers, and two Anbu appeared in the room. Yes, Hokage-sama said one of them. Prepare one of the emergency rooms now. Do not tell anyone anything. Say that I requested it. Dottie said sternly. Hi, Hokage-sama and with that they disappeared. Sasuke, Sakura, do you want to stay? Asked the elder. I'm staying with Naruto-kun said Sakura holding her boyfriend's hand. I'm staying too. The moment Naruto told us about this we became a part of the secret. Besides, it's not as if you get to see something like this every day said Sasuke smirking. Very well Dottie said Kakashi, keep an eye on them during the process. I said the silver haired as the Anbu came back. The room is ready, Hokage-sama. Let's go he said and all of them left the room. Some of the nurses looked surprised to see their Hokage walking with a serious face with two Anubis, Kakashi and his Genin team, and some of them even thought that they were finally going to get rid of the so-called demon, as he was deep in thought. The room was really big, and the walls were painted in a dark green color, and it had no furniture. The floor had some complicated seals commonly used to treat patients in a critical state. Rat, bear, you cannot tell anyone about what is going to happen. It is classified as a double S class secret. This goes to you too, kids. Understood asked Saratobi seriously. Hi, Hokage-sama said everyone in the room. Okay then, let's give Naruto space. Anbu, place a seal in the door so that no one can come in he said, and as soon as he requested it, it was done begin whenever you want, Naruto. Page bunch and no said Naruto and two clones appeared, you know what to do and he sat in a meditation position with his legs crossed, his hands in the tiger seal and eyes closed. Enj no, said both of his clones, each transforming into one of Naruto's parents, and then getting into the same position as the real Naruto. She's beautiful thought Sakura when she looked at Kishina, and the Yandane does look like him. Okay Kaiubi, my part is done Naruto mentally told his tenant. Keep concentrating. This might hurt a little, but it will be over really fast said Kaiubi. Radish orange chakra came out of Naruto going to the two clones before going down on them. The bodies became surrounded with the chakra, while Kaiubi started creating the internal organs and activating them. When that was done, she then began to merge the souls with the bodies, giving them full control. Once it was done, the chakra returned to Naruto, and he opened his eyes and took a look at his parents. Mom? Dad? Are you really alive? Asked Naruto worried that the process failed. Yes, dear we are finally here said Kashina standing up to hug her son. Little Kakashi, is that you? Asked Minato looking at Kakashi noticing how he had grown up. Sensei asked Kakashi speechless. The Anbu, who had not been there when they were discussing the event that just happened, were shocked to see that Yandame and his wife had really revived. Aji-san, thank you for taking care of our little boy said Kashina smiling. Wait, you call him Aji-san to ask Naruto. Yeah, she does. She always had a problem when it came to respecting other people said Minato chuckling before Kashina smacked him in the head. Akashi said turning around. Siratobi chuckled, I believe that's something both mother and son have in common. But now that you are here, I believe there is something we didn't plan he said, turning serious again. Let me guess, where will we stay said Minato smirking. Right said Kakashi. Why don't they stay with Naruto-kun asked Sakura. She must be Sakura. She looks just like my old friend Sayaki. Wait, maybe they're related, but now's not the time to ask thought Kashina. Because, as much as we would love that, people would be shocked to see me there said Minato. But to answer the old man's question, you forgot the bunkers for the civilians in the Hokage monument. No one uses them and they have beds we could use. And Naruto could come visit any day and bring us food. And he could bring his girlfriend over added Kashina, making Sakura blush a deep red. Mom? You haven't even been introduced and you're already teasing her said Naruto. So why don't both of you come over tonight for dinner asked Minato. I would like to sir said Sakura nervously. No need to be that formal with us. Just call us by our name said Minato with a smile that resembled Naruto's. Are you Sasuke asked Kashina. Yes, I am here replied. Is your mom's name Mikoto by any chance she asked hopefully. Yeah, did you knew her asked Sasuke surprised that both his mom and Naruto's knew each other. Knew her? We were like sisters said Kashina grinning actually, she made me your godmother and Minato over there your godfather. Sasuke was beyond shocked. First, he learns that his mother and the mother of his teammate were best friends, and now, he is told that he is in the same room as his godparents. I heard what happened to your clan. I'm sorry about it said Kashina wiping a lone tear that fell. It's okay. I learned to live with it. Besides, Naruto here managed to convince me to leave my hatred for my brother he said. Sorry to interrupt, but I think we should get going. Minato, can you use your Horatian to leave? asked Suratobi. Sure, but we need to have a meeting to discuss some important matters regarding us Minato said. Yeah we do. How about tomorrow? As you already have plans for tonight he said. Sure. Tomorrow at the monument at 9am asked Minato. Okay, see you there. You guys should be there too said the aging Hokage to Team 7 including Kakashi. Hi said the four of them, Brad, Bear. I am assigning a mission for you too. 
make sure no one gets near the bunkers no exceptions. Hi they said and disappeared in a swirl of leaves. We will get going now said Minato Sasuke, you come over tonight too. See you later with that, Kashina embraced him, and both disappeared in a yellow flash. Kakashi, you should probably go home now said the Sandame. Yeah, I was about to leave said Kakashi leaving along with the Hokage. HN. Naruto, I guess this means that we are something like brothers asked Sasuke smirking. You bet said Naruto. So tonight we are going to have dinner with them right asked Sakura. Yeah. Sasuke, you better be there too, or I will kick you. Like you could said Sasuke turning around to leave anyway see you tonight. So, Sakura-chan, want to spend some time before we go to the monument asked a hopeful Naruto. I would love to, Naruto-kun, but I want to get ready. I want to have a good impression on your parents said Sakura blushing a little. Naruto sighed, can I at least walk you home? Sure, let's go she said smiling. Naruto held her hand and they left the hospital toward Sakura's house. On the way, they spotted teammate near the steakhouse, and Sakura was hoping that they didn't notice them, but luck was not on her side. Hey forehead, what are you doing holding the dobe's hand shouted Ino. Odd, Ino why do you have to be so loud said Shikamaru. Naruto-kun isn't a dobe, Ino said Sakura. Did you just call him Naruto-kun? Hey I thought you liked Sasuke-kun mocked Ino. Yes I did call him Naruto-kun and no, I don't like Sasuke said Sakura to a now shocked Ino actually, Naruto-kun is my boyfriend and I'm happier with him than I would ever be with Sasuke. You mean Sasuke-kun is mine now asked Ino. Sakura only nodded smiling. Yes, you can have him answered Sakura, and now that we are no longer rivals, I would like us to be friends again. Took the words right out of my mouth said Ino grinning, see you later forehead. I pig said Sakura smirking. Tauji, Shika said Naruto seriously. Why so serious Naruto asked Chaoji to his friend. There is something really important I need to tell you both along with Kiba. We'll find him and tell him you want to meet with us as I can see you're busy said Shikamaru smirking. Eh thank you guys so I'll see you the day after tomorrow in the park said Naruto. Troublesome. Fine. See you guys said Shikamaru with a lazy wave. Bye Naruto, Sakura said Chaoji and they left to find Ino. We should get going too said Naruto. Yes said the. They walked the rest of the way to Sakura's house in a comfortable silence. Soon, they were already at her doorstep. Is it okay if I pick you up at 7 asked Naruto. Yeah, it's fine said Sakura smiling. See you then said Naruto turning around to leave. Wait said Sakura kissing him on the cheek, now you can go. Okay said Naruto dumbly. Both were blushing when the blonde left. Mom, I'm home yelled Sakura while taking off her sandals. I'm in the kitchen, dear yelled back her mom. Sakura went straight to the kitchen and sat on one of the chairs mom, guess what? Hmm, you got together with Naruto teased her mom. Why how did you know asked Sakura dumbfounded. I didn't. I just guessed. So, how about you ask him to come over for dinner tomorrow? I want to get to know your boyfriend to see if I approve of him said the older woman. Uh, I'll ask him. I'm going out with him later. He'll be here by 7, so I have to go up to get ready said Sakura. Naruto was walking towards his apartment thinking about what he should get for dinner, as no store would let him in, I should settle for some ramen and hope I inherited my love for it from my parents. When he got to his apartment, he took a quick shower and got dressed in a black t-shirt with an orange leaf in the middle and dark blue jeans. He decided not to wear his aid as it didn't look good with the outfit he was wearing. Naruto decided he looked well enough and went towards the ramen stand to pick up dinner before going to Sakura's. Sayaki was reading a book in the living room when she heard a knock on the door. I'm coming she said turning the doorknob. Um hello Mrs. Haruno, is Sakura-chan ready asked Naruto a little nervous as he had never talked to his girlfriend's mother and he didn't know what she thought of him. Oh, you must be Naruto she said, smiling, she will be done any second now. Want to come in while you wait? Uh, sure he said walking inside the house. The pink-haired woman led him to the couch in the living room. I will go tell Sakura that you arrived she said nicely. Thank you said Naruto gaining some more confidence. Sakura dear, your boyfriend is here said Sayaki through the door to her daughter's room. I'm almost done said the teenage girl okay, I'm ready. When Naruto heard footsteps coming towards the living room, he got a little nervous. When he saw Sakura, his jaw dropped. She had her hair in a ponytail with two bangs at each side of her face. She was wearing a pink tank top and a black skirt that reached a little above her knees. She was also stunned by how Naruto looked and was surprised to see him without his aid. Wow, you look beautiful was all Naruto could say making Sakura blush and look down. You look handsome yourself she said, ready to go. Yeah, let's go answered Naruto getting up from the couch. At the Hokage Monument, Minato and Kashina had finished cleaning up their temporary house and were setting the table at the same time Naruto and Sakura left Haruno's house. Honey, hurry up with that. They will get here any time now said the red-haired woman to her husband. I'm already done he said sitting in one of the chairs. Good, because they already arrived. There with the Anbu said Kashina going towards the door to welcome their guests. Kashina sand, here they are dot said the Anbu signaling to the three genin. They had come across Asuka on their way there and he tagged along. Hey, mom said Naruto grinning. Hello, kids. 
Come and said Kashina smiling, the place where they were staying was quite big as it was designed to hold the civilians during an attack on the village, and because of that, it looked a little empty. In the makeshift dining room, Minato was waiting for them. Hey, kids he said grinning like Naruto does. Hey, dad said Naruto. So, what did you bring for dinner son asked Minato. Uh, is Raymond okay? I mean Ichiraku's is the only restaurant that will let me in asked Naruto. Raymond shouted both of his parents with drool coming out of their mouths. We love it. Oh man, Ichiraku's is still open. How is the old man doing asked Minato excitedly. Thank you god Tuchi Oji san is doing fine said Naruto happy that his parents loved the same food as him. Have a seat guy said Kashina sitting down herself. Thank you, Kashina san said Sakura politely. No need to be so formal, dear said Minato chuckling making the rosette blush. Sakura, is your mother's name Sayaki by any chance asked Kashina. Yeah, that's her name. How did you know asked a surprised Sakura. Oh my god. I knew it. You look so much like her said Kashina, both of your moms and I were the best of friends when we were young. The three members of Team 7 were shocked to know that their moms had been so close when younger, and they were also shocked by the coincidence. So, is Sayaki still a Kanoichi or did she already quit asked Kashina. She said she quit when she heard she was pregnant replied Sakura getting a little more comfortable. Sorry to interrupt the conversation, but now that both of you are alive again, you do know that it is almost impossible to stay hidden like this without anyone noticing, right asked Sasu talking for the first time. Good question said Minato well, we will have a meeting with Hiruzen tomorrow where we will discuss that. What I do know that has to be done is informing the council of this. If they find out by any other source, things will get complicated. Well, let's eat while we talk. We don't want the Raymond to get cold now, do we ask Kashina excited about her favorite food. Naruto took out a scroll and wiped some blood through it, making a big number of Raymond balls appear in a puff of smoke. It was a little after midnight when they decided it was time to go home. Everyone had a good time, even Sasuke. Both Sakura and Sasuke learned a lot of things about their mothers through Kashina, and Naruto was really happy that both of his parents approved of Sakura. Even though he wouldn't admit it, Sasuke already thought of them as a family. He saw a father in Minato, a mother in Kashina and siblings in Naruto and Sakura. Life was getting better for Team 7. The next day, everyone who knew about the revival of the two Namikazes was sitting in the Hokage's office. The Anbu were guarding the door, and Minato had used a seal on the windows that made it impossible to see what was inside even for the Byakugan. So now that everyone's here, we have some important things to discuss said the Sandane. Like when we are going to show ourselves to the village, right asked Kashina. Yeah answered Suratobi. I think it would be best to announce that you're back either after or during the exams that will take place in one month from now here. What? Exams? I want to be there exclaimed Naruto. Whoa, wait there young man said Suratobi. You guys haven't even been on a single mission, and the requirements are to have a decent amount of D-rank missions, and at least a C-rank 1. Oh come on Aji san. You just graduated from the academy three days ago, Naruto said Kakashi chuckling. Anyway said Minato, chuckling, I think it would be better to announce it as soon as possible. I already miss being a shinobi. Yeah, and I miss the compound said Kashina smiling. What do you mean by compound asked a stunned Naruto. Well, the Namaka's clan was one of the founding members of the village, but it technically ended with me, so when we announce that we are back, we will also announce you as our son and the heir to the clan, and your last name will also be changed to Namaka's answered Minato. Minato, Kashina, it's time for the meeting. I will send one of the Anbu for you when I tell them the news said Suratobi, and with that he left his office, I wonder how Danzo will take the news. In the council meeting room, the members of the council and the village elders Kaharu, Hamura and Danzo, were wondering why they were summoned that day. They were only told that it was of utmost importance, but were not given any more details. There were seats for the heads of the council-level clans, these being the Yamanaka, Akamichi, Nara, Aburam, Hayuga, Inuzuka, Ichiha and Namikas, but the last two were empty because there was no longer a head in any of those two clans, or so they thought. There were also seats for the elders to the sides of the Hokage's seat. The doors opened, and Suratobi came in with an Anbu guard behind him. He walked to his seat and sat down. I'm sure most, if not all of you are wondering why you were summoned here he said seriously, the purpose of this meeting is to inform you of the return of two of the best shinobi to ever come from this village. So, Sunade Haim and Jureya are back, Hai asked Hamura. Actually, it's none of them. It's two people who haven't been here in 12 years said Saratobi. anyone want to try another guess, or do you want me to tell you instead? We are very busy people, so just tell us who they are said Danzo not surprisingly. Very well. The two shinobi I told you about are no other than our dear Yandame Hokage and his wife he said smirking on the inside. How is that even possible? Minato died sealing the Kaiubi, and Kashina disappeared the day of the attack said Nara Shikaku, being the smartest one there. Actually, Kashina died giving birth to their son, who I'm sure all of you know by now said. The aging Hokage Uzumaki Naruto is actually Namika's Naruto, son of Namika's Minato and Kashina. How can that demon brat be related to Yandame? 
And how the hell are those two alive exclaimed Danzo, if you actually compared their looks, it would be really obvious. And for your other question, I will have them tell you personally. Rat, tell them to come said Siratobi. Hi, Hokage-sama said the masked man disappearing from the room and just after he left, a yellow flash was seen in the room which was replaced by two people they hadn't seen in a little over a decade. How is that even possible said a shocked Kaharu. Well, it was thanks to the Kaiubi and my son said Minato grinning along with his wife. So it is true that the monster is your son said Danzo snarling and in a flash, Minato was behind him with a kunai against his throat. I will not tolerate anyone calling my son a monster in front of me said Minato. What if I do? Hunamak is challenged Danzo. I will not hesitate to kill you, you old nonsense responded the blonde man. You know, I never liked you, and I know I'm not the only one here, so if I killed you, I would help a lot of people. Your method for training people disgusts me. Even if you killed me, your son will still be called a monster because that is just what he, he never got to finish that sentence because a kunai pierced through his head. They were shocked to see that it wasn't Minato's kunai but Kashina's. That pest is finally gone. Good riddance said Kashina with the most serious look everyone including Minato had seen on her face. Do you know what you just did exclaimed Kaharu outraged. Yes, I perfectly do. I took care of a tyrant and warhawk that would eventually bring trouble to this village said Kashina, he also insulted my son, and I will not tolerate that. Rat, please clean this mess said Siratobi signaling to Danzo's corpse while sighing. I said the Anbu while taking the dead body and leaving with it. I knew that something like that would happen sooner or later stated Siratobi anyway, Minato, would you like to explain how you both are here? Yeah, sure said Minato and proceeded to explain what happened. So, you're telling us that Kaiubi is not really evil, and that she was the one that made it possible for you to be here asked Inoichi. Yes yeah, said Kashina simply. So, now that you are here, when are you going to show yourselves to the village asked Chauza. We wanted to discuss that with all of you said Minato. I suggest you do it tomorrow in the afternoon. We can say that Hokage-sama has an announcement to make, and that it is important for the village to know said Hiashi. I agree. You should also announce that Naruto is your son to see if that will stop them from mistreating him said Kaharu, who was a little fond of the boy, even though she had not met him, so it is decided. Tomorrow we will announce that. Also, what do we do about Rit now that Danzo is dead said Siratobi. We could get them into the regular Anbu or in the Black Ops suggested Tsum. Well then, tomorrow they will be informed of this too decided the aging leader before finishing the meeting. The members of Team 7 were waiting for the three people that went to the meeting, as they wanted to hear when their return would be announced. Ah. Why are they taking so long shouted Naruto walking around the Hokage's office. HN, they are in a meeting dope. What they have to discuss is important, so it may take a while I answered Sasu, getting a little impatient as well, but unlike Naruto, he hit it. Whatever, team replied Naruto. Just sit down, Naruto. You're going to give me a headache said Kakashi rubbing his temples. Sakura giggled Naruto-kun, calm down. It's just been an hour. I believe council meetings take longer than that so try to relax she said smiling to him, and that had the effect she desired. He sat down next to her but was fidgeting with his fingers, showing that he was still impatient. At least I managed to make him sit down oh well, can't win them all I guess. Just as Sakura finished that thought, a yellow flash appeared in the room, and a puff of smoke followed. Okay guys, tomorrow at noon, our return will be announced to the village. I want you, Naruto, to be with us so they believe me when I tell them that you are my son. I know how stupid these people can be, thanks to a certain old nonsense we dealt with some moments ago said Minato frowning at the last part. About that, Minato, Kashina, I have to tell you something in private. Team 7, you can go to the mission hall to ask Aruka for a mission if you wish said Siratobi dismissed. Hi, Hokage-sama said Team 7, Naruto just mumbling because he too wanted to hear what the Hokage would tell his parents. Once they were out, Siratobi turned more serious than before. You remember from your time as Hokage that Danzo loved wars and would do whatever it takes to have the perfect weapon, right? I think I know where you are going with this. Let me guess, he wanted to take advantage of Naruto training him to control Kaiubi so that he could use its power, right? Asked Kashina, yeah. He wanted that but luckily for Naruto, neither me, the council nor my advisors gave him permission, and it was decided for Naruto to be trained in the academy instead said Siratobi. Thank you for everything you have done for my son, Oji sent said Kashina grinning like Naruto. Odd, now I remember who Naruto got his personality from said Siratobi face palming. He laughed Kashina with a hand behind her head making Minato sweat drop. The next day, every single person within Konoha had gone to the street surrounding the Hokage building to hear the important announcement their leader had to make. People were whispering between them about what the urgent matter may be. Some even thought that their leader would be retiring and had already chosen his successor and were wondering which of the shinobi of the village was worthy enough of that title. Soon, everyone was settled and the Hokage decided it was time. He walked to the front of the rooftop where all the people could see him and everyone grew quiet. Civilians and ninjas of Kanahagakur, it is my pleasure to inform you that two of the best shinobi to ever come from this village have returned. 
I know some of you may be thinking that they are two of our Sanin, and if you are, you are wrong. I present you Namaka's Minato and Kashina said Siratobi to the extremely large crowd. The people were about to shout their protests, saying that they were already dead, but Yandame's signature technique stopped them before some could even say the first syllable. Everyone instantly grew quiet, and their eyes grew as wide as dinner plates. They could not believe their eyes. Their long deceased leader and his wife were standing right before their eyes. They knew it was not a henge as the shinobi had already tried dispelling it. Hey, everyone. You look like you've seen a ghost said Minato smirking. It's a trick. You're dead. You can't be here shouted a random civilian making both Minato and Kashina laugh. Well, if you said that two days ago, you would have been right. But thanks to our dear son, we are alive as you can see answered Kashina. How come you have a son asked another person, this time a shinobi. Well, we had him before we died, and actually all of you know him really well said Kashina with a sickening smile. Oh, yeah. But the thing is, you know him not by his name, which is Naruto by the way, but rather you call him what was a dear asked Minato to his wife, as realization hit some of the people. I believe it was demon brat, fox brat, monster, etc. What should we do about that? Sweetie asked Kashina making everyone's eyes widen. I don't know. Why don't we ask Naruto? After all, it's him they're disrespecting, and as far as I am concerned, I asked for him to be viewed as a hero, not a pariah said Minato getting serious at the last part. Add, you called ask Naruto grinning while walking towards him from the inside of the building. Yeah, son. What do you suggest we do with the people that mistreated you asked Minato, making everyone pale as a ghost, scared of what may happen to them. Nothing he simply said, you sure? I mean these people mistreated you for a long time. If it was up to me, I'd torture anyone who tried to physically hurt you said Minato cracking his knuckles. Yeah, I'm sure. I don't hold grudges against any of them, but that doesn't mean I have forgiven them. How about you explain how you came back to life so they can rethink their hatred for me said Naruto showing his mature side. Well then, son said Minato ruffling his son's hair Kashina, I think it is your turn to explain. i then she said pouting, okay people, listen and listen well because I will not repeat this. First I will tell you the truth about the Kaiubi attack 12 years ago, because what everyone thinks is not true. Also, the law that was made to prevent the younger generation from knowing about this, is no longer active as of this moment. Now hear me out. Kaiubi is not really evil. She was controlled by Ichihamadara. I'm sure you know who that is she paused to see everyone was paying attention to her. Good. He used the power of his Sharingan to control her when she was resting. When Kaiubi realized it, she tried to break the control, but eventually gave up. That is until she saw what Madara was going to make her do. He was going to use her for his revenge against this village. That is when she tried to fight for her freedom the most as she didn't want to kill innocent people. From there, you know the drill. Minato sealed her inside our newborn son, Naruto, and died doing so, and most of you thought I died during labor. Wrong. I was helping out my husband during the sealing, and we made a little mistake. We also sealed our souls along with Kaiubi. It was only two days ago that Kaiubi managed to contact Naruto here, and we also met him. As a way to apologize for everything she caused in Naruto's life, she offered to revive us by a process that neither of us will explain, as it has been ranked a double S-class village secret, and has the death penalty finished Kashina with a deep breath. They hoped this had changed the mind of the people of their village, and it actually did. To have their leader come back from the grave along with his wife and give them a rude awakening really made them, well some of them, realize how wrong their beliefs on Naruto were. Of course there were some who still thought of him as the Kaiubi itself, and they were now the minority. The ones that were most shocked about this were the genin that knew Naruto. Also, as of this moment, Naruto's name is officially Namaka's Naruto, and will live in the Namaka's compound, along with his parents said Suratobi. Soon enough, everyone left to their houses, and the Namaka's family was left with the Hokage. So, now that you are free to go around the village, do you want to become active ninja again asked Suratobi. Yeah. I miss going on missions said Minato. Okay then, after you help Naruto move his stuff to your clan compound, come to my office, and we will mark you as active again said, the aging leader smiling. Thank you Saratobi said Minato shaking his hand. And with that, the Namaka's family left towards Naruto's apartment to gather his stuff. When Naruto saw his new home, he was stunned. Two days ago, he would have never imagined that he would end up living in such a place like the Namaka's compound. Just seeing it from the outside was enough to make someone wish they lived there. The gates to the whole compound were made of pure gold, and they were at least 3 meters tall. Once you crossed it, there was a garden with a stone path that leads to the main house where they would be living. It was a traditional Japanese-style house that had two floors. Surrounding the main house, there were 10 smaller houses for the other clan members, but they were empty as they were the only Namikazes left. As soon as they got inside, Naruto wasted no time in exploring the place where he would be living from now on. He was amazed at the size of every room there was. 
Once he checked the first floor out, which had the kitchen, dining room, living room, a library and three bathrooms, he went up the stairs towards the second floor where the bedrooms were. His parents had gone to check that everything they had was still there, so he was left alone. The second floor had a hallway with doors to both sides that lead to the bedrooms. Naruto counted how many doors there were and was surprised to see there were six. He opened the first door and saw that it was a guest room, and it was quite big. It only had a queen-size bed in the middle, drawers to both its sides and a TV in front of the bed. Four of the doors were guest rooms, and he got nervous when he got to the last two. I wonder if one of those was going to be my room when I was born he thought before taking a deep breath, here goes nothing. He was surprised to see that it was indeed supposed to be his room, only that it was decorated for a baby. There was a crib in the center, and the walls were painted a light blue. There were some stuffed toys on the shelves along with baby supplies. He felt a tear roll down his cheek after seeing what could have been his if that nonsense Madara had not come. He then felt a hand placed on his shoulder. You're wondering how life would have been if Madara hadn't come, right asked his mother's tender voice. How did you know he asked surprised while wiping his eye. Mother's intuition she answered smiling, want to see the last room? I'll go there in a while. I want to spend some time here he said quietly. Sure, I'll leave you alone said his mother before turning and walking away. Meanwhile in Haruno's house, both of them were currently in the kitchen, Sayaki was cooking, and Sakura was sitting on the table. Did you know about Naruto's parents asked Sayaki taking a glance at her daughter. Yeah, I knew. But I didn't say anything because Hokage-sama made it a double S-class secret until it was announced to the village said Sakura, I was actually there when they revived. I understand said her mom, so has she told you anything? She said that both of you along with Sasuke's mom used to be the best of friends, which leads me to the question. Why didn't I meet Sasuke when we were younger asked Sakura, weren't you his mom's best friend too? Yeah, I was but after Kashina passed away, we grew distant and went from being best friends to only saying hi whenever we saw each other in the streets answered Sayaki Kashina was the one that held us together. Well, but now you can meet her again. She's my boyfriend's mom after all said Sakura smiling. Yeah I would like that. So do you have to go on any missions tomorrow asked the older Haruno. Yeah. I have to meet my team at 7 for our usual D rank missions, cough chores cough said Sakura making her mother chuckle, well, food's ready so let's eat said Sayaki. By the time Naruto got out of the room, it was already midnight. He went to the living room to find his father reading some scroll and his mother sleeping lying on Minato's lap. There's some ramen your mom made in the kitchen, you should eat something. By the way you can take any guest room and decorate it as you want said Minato. Thank you dad, I'll go eat and then to bed. Oh, and before I forget, here take this said Minato, handing him one of his three-pronged kunai. You can use this if you are in trouble, and even Kakashi can't deal with it. To use it, just throw it somewhere and I will teleport there. Okay I'll keep it in my pouch. Thanks again dad said Naruto going to the kitchen. If I were Raymond, where would I be asked Naruto to himself while opening and closing cabinets. Duh, the fridge said Naruto face palming while heating up the Raymond. Once it was done, he wasted no time in downing it. God, mom's Raymond is as good as Ichiraku's. When he was done, he headed towards one of the guest rooms and settled in the one that was just two doors away from his parents' room. Well, I guess I will have to bring my stuff here, but I will do it tomorrow after those damn chores he said sighing before lying down in his new bed trying to get some sleep, but fate wasn't on his side that night. Hey kid said Kaiubi contacting her host after some days, I want to talk with you regarding something that might interest you, and it wait until tomorrow. I really need some sleep said Naruto while covering his face with a pillow and groaning, well, if you wish. But then you will have to wait to hear about the powers I can give you. Suit yourself replied Kaiubi inwardly smirking fully knowing that got his attention. In that case, sleeping can wait. What were you saying about those powers asked Naruto excitedly forgetting completely that it was a little over midnight and that he had to wake up early to meet with his team. He will gain fox-like senses. That means better hearing, sight and nose. You will also have more brute strength along with speed said Kaiubi. How long will it take asked Naruto hoping it would be done soon so he could test his new powers. I will start once you are asleep. It may take up to 5 hours, so if you want them soon, then you better go to sleep now answered Kaiubi to her host. Yeah. I can't wait. Good night, Kaiubi said Naruto quickly falling asleep. Next morning, Naruto was just waking up when he smelled something really good from downstairs, M. Raymond he thought slightly drooling wait. Even if I knew the smell of Raymond like the back of my hand, I would never be able to smell it. That means that I already have the abilities Kaiubi gave me. Yeah it worked said Kaiubi. Wait, how can you talk to me right now? I thought I needed to be relaxed or focused for you to be able to talk to me asked a very confused blonde. Well, when I gave you your new abilities, I also made it possible for us to have a mental link. That way, we can talk anytime and I can give you advice and help you out in battle. I could also help you with you training Kaiubi replied. Awesome. Well, now I must get going. 
There's some ramen waiting to be eaten he said with a smirk and a little drool coming out of the corner of his mouth before dashing to the kitchen. Raymond, Raymond, Raymond he chanted. Both of his parents, who were sitting in the kitchen, heard him and chuckled. Reminds me of myself when I was younger said Minato. Yeah, and also of myself after we met. I swear it's your fault I love Raymond so much Kashina scolded playfully. But you don't regret trying it, do you smirked Minato, who would ask Kashina before both of them broke out laughing. Hey mom, dad where's the Raymond asked Naruto looking around for his favorite food. Here, sweetie answered his mother chuckling while putting down a bowl on the table. Thank you replied the younger one in the room before stuffing his face. He was done in less than a minute is there more he asked with stars in his eyes. Why yes, there is dear. But only enough for two more refills replied the red-haired woman, while filling Naruto's bowl again. Mom, your Raymond is tied in the first place with Ichiraku's exclaimed Naruto. Wait, you said Ichiraku asked Minato looking at his son. Yeah, I did. Why asked Naruto. It just surprised me that he still runs the place said Minato, we used to go there almost every day. Tucci was a good friend of ours and one of the best cooks we knew. We need to pay him a visit said Kashina going to the sink to clean Naruto's bowl. Yeah. How about we go there tonight? You can also tell Sasuke, Sakura and her mom to come. Invite Kakashi too. I need to go over the Sandame's office to ask him where the hell that pervert of a sensei of mine is said Minato. Sure, I'm meeting them in a while for our usual chores said Naruto upset that he had to do missions that even civilians with no kind of ninja training could do. Okay then. Good luck with the chores said Kashina laughing. See you later mom, daddy said rushing to get his stuff eager to meet with a certain pink haired Kinoichi. Sasuke and Sakura were already at the bridge where they always met waiting for Naruto and Kakashi to show up when they saw a black and yellow blur that stopped in front of them. Hey there Sakura-chan, team said Naruto hugging his girlfriend. Hi Naruto-kun said Sakura kissing his cheek. When will you confess asked inner Sakura. On our next date I will replied Sakura. Shanro. That's my girl said inner Sakura. Oh, Sakura-chan, Sasuke, my dad asked me to invite you guys to Ichiraku's tonight, along with Kaka-sensei. Oh, he also asked me to tell you to bring your mom, Sakura-chan said Naruto, sure. She actually told me she wanted to meet with your mom soon, so I'm sure she will agree. Did he say what time asked Sakura. They know he answered, chuckling and scratching his head, I suppose that's up to me, so how about seven? Okay then said Sakura cheerfully. HN, okay said Sasuke. I guess it will take a while for him to fully open up well, at least he accepted thought Naruto. Arg why does Kaka sensei have to be so late to everything shouted Naruto pulling his hair, making his girlfriend giggle. Well, the only thing we can do right now is wait said Sakura sighing. I guess you're right said Naruto sitting down. Minato was currently going up the stairs of the Hokage building to ask the third about his sensei. He felt a chakra signature along with the sand aim from inside the room, but it disappeared, so he paid no mind to it. When he reached the door, he knocked on it. Um in said the old man's voice from the inside, and Minato opened the door. Ah, Minato. What can I do for you? I wanted to ask you if you know where the pervert is said the blonde man. I received a messenger toad last night, saying he was on his way as soon as his network informed him of you, and that he would be here around noon replied the aging leader. Are you sure about that asked Minato earning a confused look from Saratobi long time no see, Jiraiya sensei. Haha as sharp as ever I see said the white haired Sanon, I see the rumors were true then. Look Minato, I'm sorry I wasn't there for Naruto this time. I'm possibly the worst godfather you could have chosen. I haven't even seen my godchild since he was born, it's okay sensei. I know that you travel almost all the time. But now that you're here, would you like to meet him asked Minato grinning. What do you think answered Jiraiya grinning as well. Then go to Ichiraku's tonight said Minato. Minato, have you tried to summon toads lately asked Jiraiya, they don't know about your revival yet. No, I haven't. I should try to see if the contract still works he said, could you please try it outside. I don't want my office destroyed because you summon a big toad accidentally like last time said Siratobi remembering when Jiraiya taught Minato how to do it and he decided to piss of the hokage. You still remember that asked Minato sweat dropping. Well, you did summon Gamabunta here. What would you expect? That was the first time this building had to be rebuilt without an attack on the village answered the old man. Okay then. Come on sensei, let's try if it still works and with that, the student and teacher duo left the office through the window. I swear Naruto got his prankster attitude from both of them. Now that they're back, they'll be the end of me said Siratobi to no one with a nime like tears. The toad summoners had gone to a nearby training field. I swear he took that prank too seriously said Minato. Hey, it's not every day you see Bunta appearing out of nowhere inside a building bringing it down completely. It was a pretty epic prank said Jiraiya chuckling at the memory. Anyway, let's get down to business said Minato suddenly turning serious. Try summoning Bunta. If he is the one to announce it on my Abakizen, then the toads will believe him seeing as he is the boss suggested Jiraiya. Okay, here I go said Minato, biting his finger to draw some blood out before making the required hand seals no. The complicated seal appeared around where his hand touched the ground, and a giant poof of smoke appeared. 
The smoke dissipated to reveal a toad bigger than most buildings in the entire village. Why did you summon me if there was no danger? Jiraiya asked the toad boss. Actually, it was me who summoned you, Bunta said Minato smirking. Who said this was all the giant toad managed to say before noticing the Yandame Nanamakas Minato. I thought you died 12 years ago when we were fighting Kaiubi. I actually did, but remember I sealed Kaiubi and my newborn son. Along with Kishina he asked getting a nod for an answer. Well, long story short, we made a mistake, sealed ourselves in Naruto along with Kaiubi, and she agreed to revive us. I have to inform of this to the toads as soon as possible said Gamabunta. Wait. I wanted to ask both of you if we can get Naruto to sign the contract said Minato. I don't see why not. He is your son after all said Jiraiya. I'm fine with it too. I would like to meet the son of the only human I ever allowed to ride on my head said Gamabunta, if that's all, then I'm heading back. Now that we're alone, have you got any reports from your spies asked Minato, knowing of the spy network Jiraiya controlled around the shinobi nations. I was going to tell this to the old man earlier, but one of my spies in Atagakur reported that Orochimaru has lately been changing bases quite frequently, and that worries me. I have asked him to report back with anything even if it doesn't seem important replied Jiraiya seriously. You think he is up to something asked Minato. I wouldn't be surprised if he was said the white haired man crossing his arms, that's why we have to be prepared for anything. Knowing him, I would say if he plans an attack, he won't do it alone. That snake might persuade another village into helping him, and he would try to infiltrate as much forces in the village as he can said the blonde. Let's discuss this with the old man said Jiraiya. Let's go back then replied Minato. By that time, Team 7 had finished their usual missions, and before Kakashi left, Naruto remembered the favor his dad asked him. Hey, Kakashi sensei said Naruto. Hmm? What is it Naruto asked the. My dad asked me to invite you to Ichirakus tonight at 5. Sasuke and Sakura-chan will go to said Naruto. H.N. I see why he said that thought Sasuke smirking, while well, Sakura only smiled at her boyfriend's little eye. Shanro. That's our Naruto-kun. That way sensei won't be late. Sure, tell Minato-sensei I will be there said Kakashi Jana and he disappeared in a swirl of leaves. As soon as he left, both Naruto and Sakura broke out laughing and had to hold each other not to fall, and Sasuke actually chuckled. Nice one, dope. Seeing as he is always exactly two hours late to everything, he will actually be on time said Sasuke. We should have done that kind of stuff since the beginning said Sakura. Yeah. From now on, we will be two hours late to meetings that involve Kakashi sensei, but because he is always late, he won't be able to say anything to us said Naruto I'm going home. I'm sure mom has made Raymond again. M. Raymond. Sakura giggled mind walking me home. How could I say no to you answered Naruto with his famous grin. See you tonight, Sasuke said Sakura taking her boyfriend's hand in hers. Yeah, see ya, Sasuke said Naruto. HN, bye was the only thing the third member of Team 7 said before leaving. Naruto and Sakura were walking hand in hand in a comfortable silence towards the latter's house. Um, Naruto-kun said Sakura. Yeah he said. Do you mind if we go to the park before going to my house she asked. Sure, let's go said Naruto smiling to her. Sakura led him to a bench where they sat just holding each other, not saying anything. Sakura decided she would break the silence Naruto-kun. What is it Sakura-chan he replied. Well, I was thinking and well, we've already been together for a few days, but we haven't properly hugged yet she said blushing. Naruto was also blushing so, you want to um hug now? Yeah, well, if you want to she said shyly. Instead of replying, Naruto started leaning towards her and she waited anxiously. Soon enough, she felt him hugging and started to hug him back. It was innocent at first, but after they got used to the feeling, they started to pour emotions into it, but eventually they had to separate due to the lack of air. Wow they said at the same time with flushed faces before leaning again into another hug. When they broke their hug, they remembered they had to go to Sakura's place. Sakura-chan, as much as I love this, I think it's time to leave said Naruto. Yeah, I think we should. But promise me we will do this more often she said the last part blushing and smiling cutely at him. You bet we will he said smiling as well, one last hug before leaving she just hugged him instead of saying anything. Okay, let's leave or we'll end up showing up late like Kakashi sensei said Sakura giggling. Hey you're right. Can't show up late after that little lie I told Kaka sensei, can we he said. Once they got to Sakura's house, Naruto surprised her by hugging her for the fourth time that day. Remember to tell your mom he said smiling at her. About our love she asked playing dumb. If you want, but I was talking about tonight he replied. I'll tell her. Bye Naruto kun. See you tonight, beautiful he said hugging her once again. Sakura entered her house and started removing her sandals when her mom came down the stairs. Oh, you're home already Sakura said Sayaki. Hey mom, Naruto kun said his parents asked us to go to Ichiraku's tonight at 7, and you said you wanted to talk to Naruto's mom soon said Sakura. Yeah, I really missed her. Who knows, maybe we could become a team again and go back on missions for old time's sake said her mom anyway, now that you're here, how about some lunch?
Later that day, Naruto and his parents were on their way to Ichiraku's. Ad, you said I would be meeting someone, who is it? Asked Naruto eagerly. My sensei, who is also your godfather replied Minato his name is Jiraiya. I think I heard his name somewhere before. Maybe at school, said a tall, white-haired man behind them. Hey. You're the pervert I saw some years ago peeking in the woman's bath at the hot spring said Naruto glaring at the man in front of him. So you still do that, don't you Jiraiya asked Kashina cracking her knuckles. Nice to see you too, Kashina said Jiraiya sweat dropping. Wait, he's Jiraiya. That pervert was your sensei, dad. Why you little brat? It's super perverted for you. Uh, sensei, I think you should shut up said Minato nervously. Why? I'm just making sure he stopped when he saw the look Kashina was giving him. It scared him even more than the day Kai Ubi attacked. Now Jiraiya, you will stop your crap before I seal your mouth, and trust me, I can just do that. Instead of answering, he hid behind Minato and sealed his lips with his fingers. Mom you're scary when you're angry said Naruto. Thank you dear she said smiling. Naruto-kun shouted a voice down the street. When Naruto turned around, he saw his girlfriend running up to him. Hey, I missed you he said hugging her forgetting about everyone else. Ooh oh so the Gaki's got himself a girlfriend said Jiraiya reaching to his notebook, but a look from Kashina stopped him dead in his tracks. Don't. You. There she said with a glare that would scare even the Shinigami himself. Yes, ma'am said the pervert before hiding behind Minato again. Hey Kashina. Is that you asked Sayaki who had just catched up to her daughter. Hey Sayaki. Long time no see said Kashina before the two old friends hugged tightly. It's been really different without you around said Sayaki, especially when Makoto was killed. Yeah I heard about that from Sasuke she said, but immediately tried to cheer everyone up, how about we go inside sure was the common answer. As soon as they got inside, Sasuke and Kakashi came in. Wait, am I hallucinating or is Hata Kakashi actually on time? Asked Jiraiya while furiously rubbing his eyes. No, you're not hallucinating, Jiraiya-sama. Naruto over there tricked me to make me come on time. Said meeting was at 5 when it was actually at 7. Real smart son you got there, sensei said Kakashi feeling a little stupid to be fooled like that. Well he is my son after all said Minato. If it isn't Minato and Kashina. After I heard both of you died, I thought my business would be done for, but your son over there managed to keep me running said Tucci making everyone laugh, this family is like a blessing for the Raymond restaurants, I think love for Raymond runs in our blood said Minato, no doubt about that said Tucci, you guys want to order yet, sure. Guys go ahead and order, I'll have one extra large of each said Minato. Thank you Kami for the Namika's clan thought Tucci while writing down the orders. That night everyone had a good time including Sasuke, who had actually talked to the rest of the people there, a big step for him towards fully opening up. Naruto and Sakura had started calling Jiraiya Iro Senen much to his dismay, and the older ones in the place thought it suited him perfectly. Everyone went home around midnight, and Team 7 fell asleep without knowing that the next day would be the start of their hardest mission yet. The forest surrounding Kanoha was completely calm, and the creatures that inhabited it were minding their own business. I'm in position. HN, let's get this over with. Target located. On 3, capture the target. 1, 2, 3, go. Three shadows jumped towards the creature startling it, and before it realized what happened, one of the shadows got it. Mission accomplished. Good job, guys said Kakashi walking over to them. You call this a good job yelled Naruto, who was currently having the hell scratched out of his face by the widely hated Tora, the daimyo's wife's cat. Let's just report this to Hokage-sama and go to the next mission. As soon as we're done with this, the better said Sasuke, annoyed at doing things even little kids could do. Mommy missed you. Thank you for bringing Tora-chan back. Here's your pay said the daimyo's wife crushing the poor cat in her embrace. Serves you right thought Naruto glaring at the cat. I get why it escapes so frequently thought Sakura sweat dropping. Okay, team 7, the missions available are babysitting, helping out in a store, and walking to the sandane couldn't finish because of the loud groan that came from Naruto. Aji san can't we do a real mission? Like dealing with bandits or escorting someone or anything like that exclaimed Naruto. His teammates were silently agreeing with him, but his sensei's thoughts were more along the lines of I'm going to get a lecture later. Naruto, those are C-ranked missions. You just graduated from the academy so you have to keep doing those until you are experienced enough was Aruka's outburst at his former student's request. Naruto, you have to understand that even D-ranked missions contribute to the village's development. Besides, missions are assigned according to the shinobi's rank. Genin like yourself are assigned D ranks, and more experienced ones may go on an occasional C rank. Dunans go on C ranks and some B ranks, and finally, an Anbu will take care of the higher ranking missions that are A rank and S rank explained Suratobi, but notice that neither Naruto nor his teammates were listening. I'm telling you guys, you have to come over to my place. It's awesome said Naruto. Sure, I'll go with you after this is over said Sakura, winking at Naruto. Sasuke just nodded. Why do I even bother thought the old man sweat dropping. Naruto. 
Have some respect for your superiors shouted Aruka with his signature big head no. Yup, I'm getting a lecture later thought Kakashi sighing. If you are so set on going on a C rank, there is currently one available said the white haired man. Are you sure about this? Hokage-sama asked Aruka. If Kakashi hasn't said no, that must mean he trusts his team is ready, right Kakashi asked Saratobi. Hi Hokage-sama, I believe we can do this answered Kakashi bound. Yeah. Finally a decent mission shouted Naruto hugging Sakura who was cheering as well. Sometimes it's good when that oh complains thought Sasuke smirking. Azuna-san, you can come and said Saratobi. The door opened to reveal an old man dressed in a brown sleeveless shirt and beige pants. He also had a cloth around his neck, but what stood out the most about him was his breath. It reeked of alcohol. Eh? Those kids will be the ones to make sure I get home safely said the man known as Tazuna, is that short with a stupid face, really a ninja. Why you shouted Naruto, who looked like he was going to rip the man apart, had it not been for Sakura and Sasuke holding him back. Azuna-san, he is actually the son of our Yandame Hokage said Hirazan. Yandame's son, huh? Doesn't matter. I'm the super bridge builder Tazuna. Your job is to protect me until my super bridge is finished. Okay, team, go get your things ready. We leave within the hour said Kakashi dismissing the genin. Once they left, Iruka turned to the Hokage. I still don't think this was a good idea, Hokage-sama. That man looked like he was hiding something. I noticed that too, Iruka. But keep in mind that Kakashi is with them, and I'm sure that by this time, Minato has already given Naruto one of his trademark kunai answered Sirotobi. I'm getting too old for this. Naruto was currently waiting for his team at the gate, as he was the first one to arrive. He saw Sasuke walking towards him in the distance and waved. The last Ichi had just raised his hand as a response well, some things won't change. At least he's not the emo he was since the massacre. Boy, dope, did you notice anything suspicious about our client asked Sasuke. Now that you mention it, he did seem a little suspicious and anxious to leave. As if he was hiding something answered Naruto seriously. I guess you're not so stupid after all said Sasuke smirking. Naruto-kun is not stupid with Sakura's outburst as she caught up to them and greeted Naruto with a hug, which they were still getting used to. HN, whatever said Sasuke when he noticed their sensei and their client going towards them. Everyone ready to leave asked Kakashi getting a nod from everyone, let's go then. Yeah. We're leaving the village exclaimed Naruto. It sure looks nice around here said Sakura looking around. Not as nice as you whispered Naruto making her blush. Hey, I'm not paying you for a romantic walk through the forest said Tazuna to the teen couple. Fine both teens said. We'll continue this later Sakura whispered to Naruto. Boy, you sure I'm going to be safe with those kids asked Tazuna to Kakashi. Yeah besides, I'm a and the worst we could come across are some bandits, so you are more than safe everyone noticed the older man squirm when Kakashi said that. He's definitely hiding something thought Kakashi. After about an hour of walking, they came across a puddle of water, and everyone seemed to notice it. Hmm, I wonder why is there a puddle when it's been sunny for weeks Kakashi asked to himself alerting the genin. Weird, isn't it Kaka-sensei, asked Sakura playing along. I say we find out why it's there said Sasuke pulling out a kunai and throwing it to the water. Out of it came two figures with what seemed to be giant claws. As soon as they appeared, they trapped Kakashi with their chains and proceeded to shred him, making the genin gasp in horror. Hit, Kakashi is still alive. He used the kawarimi. Focus and try out your new abilities now said Kaiubi to Naruto through the mental link they shared. Will do said Naruto to Kaiubi before disappearing and reappearing directly behind one of the unknown ninja, only to throw a punch that sent him crashing directly into a tree, effectively knocking him out. Brother shouted the remaining ninja, damn you brat. I don't have time to deal with you right now. The Claude Shinobi went to try and kill Tazuna, but Sasuke and Sakura finally managed to move and took out a kunai, each intending to fight. Sasuke threw his kunai to the man and started going through hand seals. The unknown man effectively blocked it, but missed Sakura, who had jumped and was above him. She threw her kunai and hit him directly in the elbow, effectively rendering that arm useless and making him scream in pain. Because of that, he had forgotten about Sasuke, who by this time finished with his hand seals. Pain. Hausenkano shouted Sasuke launching a large number of fire projectiles to the unsuspecting man. A job, guy said Kakashi appearing from between some trees and shocking Sasuke and Sakura. Thank you sensei said Naruto grinning with a hand behind his head. Naruto-kun, you knew Kaka sensei was alive asked Sakura with an extremely sweet smile. Naruto seemed clueless to it, so he didn't bother for an excuse, yeah I did he said patting his stomach as a sign that Kaiubi told him. Baka. Why didn't you tell us shouted Sakura hitting him in the head. That hurt, Sakura-chan said Naruto rubbing the bump on his head. Sorry about that, but I thought sensei had actually been killed said Sakura. Thank you for showing so much confidence in your sensei's ability said Kakashi sweat dropping and lowering his head anyway, guys tie up that guy, while I ask this one some questions. Naruto-kun said Sakura while they tied the man. Yeah? When did you become so fast and strong? 
You were like that during Sensei's test Sakura asked her boyfriend. It's thanks to you Noo said Naruto taking a quick glance at Tazuna, who didn't seem to notice as he was too preoccupied with some thoughts to hear. Kakashi came out of the forest yet again dragging the shinobi behind him, before tying him up to the same tree as the other one. Azuna-san, when were you planning on telling us you were wanted dead asked Kakashi seriously, these two men are known as the demon brothers of the mist. They are rank shinobi from Kurigakur. I hid myself for two reasons. One, to see how my team would fare on a real combat against enemy ninjas and two, to see who they were after. If they were after me, then they would have left you alone, but when I was supposedly killed, they went straight towards you. Care to elaborate what's really going on? Azuna broke down, fine, fine. The country where I come from is extremely poor and we can't afford anything. On top of that, there's this man, Gato, who has taken over the country using people as his workers with extremely low pay and selling the women and girls for pleasure. I am working on a bridge to help the economic situation of my country, but Gato is having none of that. He sent his thugs to kill me, and now there's also Shinobi. Due to the recent change in this mission, we should head back to Kanoha as it is now a B rank or low A rank, but it's not my place to decide. Guys, want to continue asked Kakashi to his students. I can always go for a challenge said Sasuke smirking. We can't leave him to die here reason Sakura. We accepted this mission so let's finish it. Dadabeo exclaimed Naruto. Then it's decided. We'll keep going said Kakashi. Thank you, thank you, thank you said Tazuna, tears of happiness freely cascading from his eyes, I swear I will send the full pay to Kanoha, once my country is back to full shape. It's okay, but for now, let's just keep going said Kakashi. After walking for a few hours, Tazuna led them towards a boat with a man in it. Oh, Tazuna-san, ready to go back asked the man. Yeah he answered, he will take us to wave. You need to be quiet when the bridge is in view, or they will come for us said the man. No doubt the next guy Gato will send will be at least a seeing as by this time I'm sure he knows we dealt with the demon brothers, who were Kakashi told his team. Soon enough, the unfinished bridge came into view, surprising the genin with the size of it. They also remembered they had to stay quiet not to be noticed. They crossed a tunnel and found themselves in a poor town where the boat docked. This is as far as I can take you. You're on your own now said the man sailing away. Let's try to get to your house before the sun sets said Kakashi walking in the direction Tazuna said his house was. After a few miles, they were walking through yet another forest when Naruto sensed something and immediately threw a kunai to a bush startling everyone, though nothing happened making Kakashi go towards where Naruto threw his kunai. He found an extremely scared rabbit and took note of his color. Strange. This is a snow rabbit. They don't live around here and even so, they're only white during winter. Someone must have lost it thought Kakashi. Hit, there is someone hiding. Give your friends a sign said Kaiubi. I said Naruto, but Kakashi beat him to it. Everyone, get down shouted Kakashi as a huge blade came spiraling just through where they had been standing. The sword hit one of the trees, and a man jumped onto its handle him, impressive I must say. Amir Jenin saw through my trap. You said Kakashi surprising his students if it isn't Mamachi Zabuza, the demon of the hidden mist. Sensei, you know him asked Sasuke not once looking away from Zabuza. He used to be one of the seven ninja swordsmen of the mist and a Kurigakur Anbu before he abandoned his village said Kakashi. Nice to know the legendary copy ninja had a Kakashi knows about me mocked Zabuza now, if you excuse me, I have to kill the old fart. No. This started to form in the area and it started to thicken making it almost impossible to see. Keep your eyes open to your surroundings. He is a master of silent killing. He is able to kill you before you even notice at Kakashi lifting his eight to reveal his Sharingan eye before the mist was deeper than before. I will be, help me with this requested Naruto. Already doing it was the short answer. Um, where should I strike? Heart, liver, jugular so many good points to choose from echoed Zabuza's voice through the mist. The genin nervously got in position around Tazuna, each pointing a kunai to the front. They couldn't see Kakashi anymore, so they had to be confident. He's coming from behind. Naruto quickly took out another kunai and moved to where Zabuza was planning to strike, making an X with his kunai. The massive blade clashed with Naruto's kunai, and he struggled trying not to lose his footing. Suddenly, Zabuza had to block a stab attempt from his left, making him leave his fight with Naruto to concentrate on the new pest. Sakura-chan, protect Azuna-san said Naruto before making his signature hand seal. Hi Naruto-kun answered Sakura. Page Bunch and No shouted Naruto creating three clones who went straight towards Zabuza throwing punches and kicks at him helping Sasuke. The real Naruto was trying to locate Kakashi, who was also trying to find them through the mist. Kakashi-sensei shouted Naruto once Kaiubi told him where Kakashi was. Zabuza managed to dispel the clones and throw Sasuke away like it was nothing before heading towards Kakashi, after realizing that in order to kill his target, he would have to deal with him and the genin first. Bunch and no, said Zabuza creating a replica of himself to fight the kids while he took care of Kakashi. Sasuke. Get yourself over here and help me with this shouted Naruto who was fending off Zabuza's clone by himself. Boy, dope. 
Move shouted Sasuke going through Hand Seal's cane. Kakaku no Jutsu. Naruto jumped out of the way just in time before the gigantic blazing ball engulfed Abusa's clone, evaporating it into nothingness. They didn't have time to relax as when they turned around to see how their sensei was doing, they saw Zabuza doing some hand seals. Tsurino said Zabuza, trapping Kakashi in a sort of water sphere. When Kakashi tried to escape, he saw it was no use, don't even bother doing anything. You can't do any in there, so be a good boy and await your death. As soon as he finished saying that, the genin got worried. Did, I have a plan said Kaiubi getting Naruto's attention. Meanwhile, Sakura was watching worriedly as her team fought the Karigakura missing nin. I feel like I'm so useless right now. Naruto-kun and Sasuke managed to destroy a clone, and I'm just standing here guarding Tazuna san thought Sakura feeling down. So what do you plan to do to change that asked inner Sakura. I will train until I can no longer stand so I won't be behind them anymore. Shanro. Asked Sensei for help, after all it's his job to train us added inner Sakura. I'm also sure Naruto-kun would agree to spar with us thought Sakura. You remember everything asked Kaiubi. Yeah, don't worry. We'll save Sensei. Boy, Sasuke. I got a plan shouted Naruto. What is it asked Sasuke. Naruto explained what Kaiubi told him, and they readied themselves to save their Sensei. Naruto then threw Sasuke a shuriken, which he threw back right at Zabuza, who had to use his free hand to stop it. What Zabuza hadn't expected though, was that there was another shuriken directly below the one he had caught, so to dodge it, he had to jump. The shuriken flew right past him. Looks like you missed kid said Zabuza and Sasuke only smirked. Not really came a voice behind Zabuza and when he turned around, he saw a kunai flying towards the arm that was holding the water prison. His reflexes made him take his arm out of there before it was too late, but by doing so, he freed Kakashi. Good plan, Naruto, Sasuke said Kakashi drenched in water, go back to Sakura. I got this covered, you got this covered you say. How ironic. Just a moment ago I had you trapped, and your genin had to release you said Zabuza chuckling. He started doing some hand seals and noticed Kakashi did as well, so you would know both of them said at the same time. Suddenly, two massive dragons made entirely of water rose from the river where they were standing and started crashing between themselves in an attempt to hit their targets. As the battle raged on, Zabuza and Kakashi went to fight using their weapons. Heh, your kunai is no match for my kubakiri hauchu said Zabuza, pushing Kakashi's kunai before both jumped back. Kakashi was making seals midair, shocking Zabuza. Ibakufu no, said Kakashi before a water circle formed in front of him, and it shot towards Zabuza and enveloped him. The current was so strong that it made it hard for Zabuza to move. The genin were shocked at the sheer power of the technique as it tore its way through the forest before eventually stopping flooding the area. When the current settled down, Zabuza was leaning against a tree, and before anyone could do anything, two came flying and embedded themselves on Zabuza's neck. The Kanoha ninjas turned to where the needles came from and saw a person standing on a tree branch. The person was wearing a blue kimono with a dark long-sleeved shirt under it and brown pants. His face could not be seen because of the mask he was wearing. It was a typical Anbu mask with the Karigakur no Sato symbol on the forehead. He also had black straight hair that fell on two bangs to the sides of his face, and it was made into a bun on the back of his head. Thank you for dealing with Zabuza. I have been tracking him down, but he always kept escaping said the newcomer I'll deal with him from now on. They just watched as the figure jumped down and took Zabuza's body before jumping away. Weird said Kakashi walking up to his student Santazuna, who was too shocked to move having witnessed a fight between two top-notch shinobi. What is it asked Sasuke. Karigakur's hunter nin usually destroy the body of their target after killing them in order to protect any valuable information they may hold regarding the village explained Kakashi. At least it's over now said Sakura relieved it had finally ended. Yeah, let's get go was all that came out of Kakashi's mouth before he fell down face first to the ground. Kakashi sensei shouted the genin rushing to see what was wrong. He's breathing stated Sakura relieved. Must be chakra exhaustion said Sasuke. Thank god sensei is okay said Naruto. Let's go to my house so he can rest suggested Tazuna before they took off. Kakashi woke up only to see he was in an unfamiliar room. Soon enough, memories about what happened flooded his mind and his head started to hurt. He suppressed an urge to groan and grab his hair while sitting up in the bed he was in. His body ached terribly and he could barely move. The door opened a little bit and a woman in her early 30s peeked to see if he was awake. When she verified that he indeed was awake, she opened the door completely. Oh, you're finally awake. I'll tell your students about this. My name is Tsunami, by the way she said turning around to leave. Wait said Kakashi before she left how long was I out? Around three days she said and finally left. Naruto, Sakura and Sasuke were sitting in the kitchen of Tazuna's house, waiting for news on their sensei's health. Naruto and Sakura sat next to each other, Sakura leaning on Naruto with her head on his shoulder, and Sasuke across from them. 
Mon Kakashi Sensei, wake up so you can teach us new things said Naruto exasperated. We've already lost three days we could've used to train said Sasuke with a sigh and glaring at the table. He should be up by now though said Sakura trying to cheer up her teammates sure, he ran out of chakra, but it wasn't that bad. They heard footsteps and turned towards the door to see Tsunami smiling. Your teacher just woke up she told them, I just checked on him and he looked like his body really hurt. Let's go, guys said Naruto standing up and the rest of the team followed suit. Sensei you're finally awake said Sakura smiling. Yeah, yeah, let's go do some training, shouted Naruto grinning. Yeah, yeah, but first can you give me one of the soldier pills I have in my pouch said Kakashi. I'm going to need them if we're going to train. Sasu took the pouch, which was on the nightstand next to him, and looked for the pill. He found a large amount of them inside a clear case, next to Kakashi's beloved smut book, took one and tossed it to his sensei, expecting him to catch it. It hit Kakashi in the face, making everyone fall in love with the Naim style. Aren't you? Sensei asked Naruto. I think even a little kid may have been able to catch it. Try to do it when you have no chakra and your whole body is sore said the cyclops wet dropping. Oh, right, forgot about that said Sakura, laughing awkwardly before taking the pill from the floor where it had rolled and putting it in Kakashi's face. When he grabbed it, everyone leaned closer to look at his face, which none of them had seen since they met him, to try and have a good look. However, it seems fate wasn't on their side that day. Hey, what's Hokage-sama doing walking over there asked Kakashi looking towards the window. They asked three very confused genin who looked only to see there was nothing. Hey, my chakras are coming back said Kakashi, stretching before noticing the glares his students were giving him. If looks could kill, he would have been dead before he noticed them. Naruto, Sakura and Sasuke were cracking their knuckles with smirks that promised he would be in a world of pain, should he do it again. The silver-haired sensei started to sweat a little. Even he was scared at the looks he was receiving, so he decided the wisest thing at the moment. If we leave now, I'll teach you something new said Kakashi. Yosh. What are we waiting for shouted Naruto with his typical foxy grin, new here I come. I wonder what kind of sensei will teach us said Sakura. Even Sasuke looked happy, well for his usual stoic character that is. I'm sorry I overheard, but there is a small forest with a clearing you could use suggested Tsunami from the door. Thank you, that will do said Kakashi with his eye smile relieved that he would not have to face his students wrath. Come on guys, the faster we get there the sooner you learn what I got planned to teach you. Once they got to the clearing, Kakashi sat down confusing his team. Kakashi sensei, weren't you supposed to teach us some super awesome things asked Naruto. First, I have to tell you something, so sit down said Kakashi. I don't know if you noticed, but it really was weird when the hunter nin didn't dispose of Zabuza right there. Because of that, I believe they are working together. The sides aren't really used to kill, and I remembered that if they hit certain spots in the human body, they can put the target in a death-like state until they're removed. So, what you're saying is that the ninja who took Zabuza away did it to save him asked Sasuke. Yes, and Zabuza is still alive, so we have to train to be better prepared to face him and the other guy as they could strike any day said Kakashi Naruto. I noticed you are now faster and stronger. Any chance this is related to Kaiubi? That's what Kaiubi's doing. She gave me fox-like senses and improved my speed and strength answered Naruto. Now that I told you about that, what do you know about chakra nature? It's the same as elemental affinity, right asked Sasuke. That's right said Kakashi, taking three small papers. These papers will tell me what your element is. If it ignites and turns to ash, it's Katner fire, if it splits in two, you got Fuetina wind nature, if it crumples up, lightning or raten, if it turns to dirt and crumbles, earth or doten, and if it becomes wet or damp, you got water or suetin. I already know I can use Katen, so I don't need to do that said Sasuke. Well you may be right, it's not unheard of for someone to have more than one element said Kakashi, if you were one of those cases, wouldn't you want to learn more than just how to use fire style? Fine, give me one of those said Sasuke while Kakashi while giving one to each of the teens. Um, sensei nothing happened said Naruto making Kakashi sweat drop. Naruto, those are meant to check your chakra nature, so you have to sense some chakra said Kakashi. After that pointer, they did just what their sensei said, and out of the three of them, Sasuke was the most surprised. His paper crumpled up meaning he could use Raten aside from Katen. Sakura's became wet and started to drip water drops, and Naruto split in two. See Kakashi asked Sasuke with his typical eye smile and Sasuke just smirked, before we start training with your respective elements, you will have to do a chakra control exercise every shinobi has to do. Tree climbing. We can already do that said Naruto besides, what does that have to do with chakra? I know you can do it, but how about doing it without using your hands asked Kakashi, smiling at their surprised faces before walking up to a tree and walking up its trunk like it was nothing. The three genin had their eyes wide open because they had never believed it was possible to use chakra for such things. The first one to recover from the shock was Sasuke, how do we do it? Focus a certain amount of chakra in your feet and hold it while you are climbing explained Kakashi, if you don't use enough chakra, you will fall and if you use too much, the bark of the tree will break and you will also fall. 
use a kunai to mark how high you got. Once they had a kunai out, the three genin rushed to the tree in their first attempt. Sasu climbed about half of the tree and then fell. Naruto only got about 4 feet high because he used so much he blew the bark and flew some feet face first into the floor, and Sakura was nowhere in sight. Up your guy said Sakura cheerfully sitting on a branch near the top. Naruto looked proud of his girlfriend, and Sasuke looked a tad envious. Kakashi had suspected about her abilities in chakra control, and this exercise only confirmed it. Sakura, you can come down now said Kakashi. Sakura jumped down and noticed her boyfriend didn't have the same luck as her on his first try, so she decided to give him some pointers. Naruto-kun said Sakura walking towards him, try to gather the chakra on your feet before rushing to the tree. Maybe try using the tiger seal too. Thank you Sakura-chan said Naruto smiling, I'll do it now. I know you will she said, hugging him for luck before heading towards where Kakashi was waiting. During the three days they were in wave, Naruto and Sakura had become more comfortable with their relationship, and hugs became more frequent. Naruto tried the exercise again using the pointer Sakura gave him, and managed to get a little above Sasuke's first try, which was about halfway up. Sasuke looked surprised to see that a little tip could help Naruto so much as to go above him. He really wanted to ask what it was, but his pride wouldn't allow it. While both of them kept trying, Kakashi was considering asking Sakura something that had been on his mind since he saw her chakra control. Sensei, what will you teach me? asked Sakura. First, let me ask you something when he saw Sakura nod, he continued, has anyone told you that your chakra control is near perfect? Not really she said. You have potential to be a really good medic nin said Kakashi. I have some scrolls about medical ninjutsu back home, and if you want them, I could give them to you. Tsunade Sama was a medic nin, right she asked. When she saw him nod, she continued, she was my role model when I was still in the first years of the academy. I think I'll become a medic nin, sensei. You know that she was a sanin along with Yurei Asama, right asked Kakashi. That pervert yeah, I knew that said Sakura. Maybe he knows where she is and we could look for her so she could teach you a thing or two about healing, said the silver haired, but for now, let's focus on what I'm going to teach you. Hi, sensei said the, during the time we stay here, I'm going to teach you nature manipulation, and then a couple of suetin said Kakashi. I will also teach Naruto and Sasuke nature manipulation and on their respective elements, once they're done with tree climbing. How do I I do that asked Sakura. Kakashi grabbed a leaf from the floor and showed it to Sakura. You have to control the water inside this leaf and take it out, so it will be completely dry. He then proceeded to concentrate, and the leaf started to become brown, signaling it was completely dry. Water dripped from the leaf onto Kakashi's hand and then to the floor. Wow, I never thought that could be possible said a surprised Sakura. That's because you haven't really seen anything of the shinobi world. Things beyond your wildest dreams may happen explained Kakashi, there are more ways to train in nature manipulation for your elemental affinity, but they're harder and require you to master this first. Because of your chakra control, I know you may be able to pull this off rather fast. Sakura nodded and picked up a leaf to try and dry it up. She sent some of her chakra to the leaf to try and take all of the liquid from it, but only managed to dry about one-fifth of the leaf. She didn't look pleased with that, so she tried harder the next time, but still got the same result. Kakashi seemed to notice this. Don't worry, this won't happen instantly, and it's not about how much chakra you use, but rather how you use it he said, trying to calm her down before she became frustrated, and it seemed to work. Back with Naruto and Sasuke, both had made significant progress, and they were about three-fourths up, and even though both felt tired, they refused to lose to the one they looked as a rival. This only seemed to fuel the desire to reach the top as fast as possible. Team, I bet I can finish before you do said Naruto smirking. Yeah, right. Like a doe could beat me said Sasuke smirking as well, might spice things up a little. The winner gets the loser seconds during dinner. Yuron shouted Naruto before rushing up the tree. After a few hours, both managed to reach the top of their respective tree at the exact same time, and around that time, Sakura had also managed to dry completely her leaf. Kakashi and her were heading to where Naruto and Sasuke were resting, so they could go back to Tazuna's house for dinner. Damn you, Dobe said Sasu chuckling, I guess we both get seconds. Naruto-kun, Sasu shouted Sakura walking up to them with Kakashi not too far behind. Hey, Sakura-chan. How was your training asked Naruto. She's doing really well said Kakashi, how about yours? I want to know if you managed to reach the top today. Yeah we did it answered Sasuke. Alright, then let's go back to the house. Tomorrow you will start with your elemental training said Kakashi. The journey back to the house was a quiet one, every one of them exhausted by their respective training. When they were a block away, Naruto picked up on the scent of Tsunami's cooking and started drooling a little at how delicious it smelled. Once they were inside, they found a little boy sitting at the table. Hey, you're just in time for dinner said Tsunami smiling to her guests while serving them their plates. Naruto and Sasuke dug in like there was no tomorrow, making Sakura giggle and Kakashi chuckle. This turned into yet another competition between the rivals to outdo each other. 
Tazuna walked in and couldn't help but laugh at them. It looks like you two were really hungry said Kakashi. Eat as much as you can said Tazuna after all, it's the least we can do for the people who are helping this country's future. The boy couldn't hold his anger any longer, go back home while you can. You don't know who you're messing with shouted the boy, that man has made my life a living hell. He killed my father right in front of my eyes. He will do the same thing to you if you don't leave. While he was ranting, Naruto's anger started to surface, what do you know about pain, huh? You think that having your father killed is bad enough asked Naruto glaring daggers at the boy, if you think so, then you are truly pathetic. Everyone was deadly quiet. His teammates and sensei knew what he was referring to, so they let him continue. Sasuke's whole clan was slaughtered by a single man, and do you know who it was? I'll tell you who it was said Naruto. He knew he had no right to say that, but the look Sasuke gave him was like he was telling him it was okay, his own brother did it. The one he looked up to. And if you think that his life was the worst that could happen, then you are wrong said Naruto still glaring at him, my life was the real definition of a living hell. My whole village hates me because of something I'm not even responsible for. I grew up being an orphan, but they kicked me out of the orphanage when I was 6 years old. Every store charged me 3 times the price of anything, and even then, some stores wouldn't even allow me to go in. Every year on my birthday, I would have to hide because the villagers looked for me to try and kill me, and when they didn't find me, they went to my apartment and completely trashed it. And now, here I am. On a mission to help a village where some ungrateful brat who thinks his life is hell because he lost his father. I'm out of here and with that, Naruto left the house going back to the clearing where they trained before. Sakura quickly followed after him to comfort him as she knew that was the best she could do for him. The inhabitants of the house were really shocked at the revelation. Was what Naruto said true asked Izuna, unable to grasp the truth behind the blonde's words, did the villagers really try to kill him? I'm afraid it's true said Kakashi. And Sasuke, is it also true about what happened to your family asked Tsunami. Yeah, that was also true. I'm the survivor of my entire clan said Sasuke. Let's just hope Sakura makes it in time said Kakashi, she's the only one who is able to comfort him 